Welcome to Brothers of the Serpent Podcast. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, angels and demons and monsters and serpents. Scriptards and everyone else. <laughs> this is Brothers of the Serpent podcast coming to you not live from the 10 by 10 by 10 tangent cube of science. Nestled amongst the stone bones on the Edwards Plateau. And uh, Angels and Demons and Monsters and Serpents. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to learn how to say that fast. <laughs> Angels and Demons and Monsters and Serpents. And Scriptards. And Scriptards. <laughs> <laughs> so we got, uh, we got a, a, a great note uh, about the podcast. This past week or whatever it says, uh, just finished all the episodes. Brains expanded by thirty percent. Must get off this planet. All my plans here are fucked. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another one, ladies and gentlemen. This podcast is guaranteed to brain expansion thirty percent <laughs> minimum. <laughs> <laughs> And ruin all of your future plans. That's right. Ruin all your plans, but brain expansion. You know? You know yep. Got to weigh the pros and cons. Yep. <laughs> that was from uh, Kmart, by the way. Thanks, Oh, uh, Kmart! Yeah. <laughs> whoop de whoop whoop <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty cool. Like, uh, when our friends start listening to it and then they get in they get into it and yeah. start getting phone calls like dude <laughs> yeah <laughs> bro, okay bro okay bro okay bro <laughs> yeah oh it feels good thanks a lot yeah we really it. appreciate it yeah it's awesome <laughs> so anyway pyramids yeah <clears throat> i've been thinking about them and again uh, and uh who doesn't <laughs> i don't know i mean seriously I, when i try to talk to people that don't think about pyramids <laughs> It's really hard now. Right. And then like, you find out, you're like, oh, oh, you don't think you about don't pyramids. Think about pyramids. I, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I wear, wear my uh, coworker out sometimes oh. with pyramid talk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Corey? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe. He's just like, yeah, whatever, Johnson. Yeah. Yeah, he's always got his headphones in. He's shaking his head. He's it's like, the he's, classic. I'm like, what? What is he saying? Oh, he's probably talking about pyramids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but I've been thinking about pyramids. And um, we had the, the eclipse, partial eclipse happen. And so I was watching the, uh, the sky early on uh, before the eclipse. And I noticed the moon was rising up early in the morning, like right before the sunrise and it, and it was, you know, waning and headed towards a new moon. And there was just a sliver underneath it. And also like, I haven't been up that early in the morning to watch or looking at the sky and it was really, really clear. And before the moon came up, I saw Orion over there. So I was checking that out and I hadn't seen Orion in a little while and, uh, blew my mind when the moon came up and I was like, shit I can see I could see like this was the first time like I've been trying to 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 really orient myself to the stars right we've talked about this before yeah uh and actually pretty mind-blowing when it happens yeah yeah and actually really get a feel of like where I am on the rolling ball yeah and the motion of the of the spinning of the ball and then the bodies out in the solar system and in outer space their positions and fully grasp yeah what's going on right and because i knew the eclipse was coming uh seeing the moon rise like that knowing that the sun's about to rise an hour later yeah and seeing the little sliver underneath like i could i could and suddenly that let the light and shadow you're like oh yes dude oh. yes yeah. and like the 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 little smile on the bottom of the moon was tilted to the left. And so I knew the sun was down there below yeah. the horizon to the left a little bit. Yeah. And that they were going to be getting closer to yeah. closer together over the next two days. And so I imagine I started imagining them passing through the sky. And like once the sun comes up, I won't be able to see the moon, but they're slowly getting closer. Right. Yeah. As they go around, as we go around. And then the next. And so we we, we made the plans and, and the next day we all like to yeah. watch it and it was cloudy and shit <laughs> but we actually did get to see the moon and the sliver was like 
of, of the shining part was even smaller. Right. The other aspect that was cool about it is that you could see the entire circle of the moon. Right, because of the Earthlight. Right, because the sun was so close, daylight was so close on the surface, and it's reflecting back. It was just so. Along with this sort of mental alignment that I had with the universe, you know, where I am in the universe, life, the universe. Yeah, yeah, I was just like, holy <laughs> shit! Like I can you see like forty two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could just see where you know. I, I shouldn't say the universe, the solar system, really. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I had been staring at at Orion before. And I, and of course, Orion, the last time I was looking at it was in the evening time around 10 midnight yeah, on the other side of the on sky, the other side of the sky Flipped over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Diving down, you know, setting yeah. in the, in the late evening. And now he's rising up and he's laying over on his, uh, like a different way on his side. Yeah. He's laying, it's like, he's laying forward now, right? He's tilted, he's tilted towards his bow or whatever, towards the cat, towards the bull. I think so. And so when he was going down the other way, he's on his back. I think. I think that's how it works. I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember either. <sighs> but I'm just going to say that's what it is. Okay. So <laughs> all, I, all I do remember is that the belt stars were vertical. Yeah. Yeah. The other day, right? Yeah. In yeah. the morning. And yeah, so I was looking at that. those, and, I'm, and, and it was real bright, very, very clear. And the moon had, had just come up, but it was just a tiny little sliver of light, yeah. so there was like little light pollution. And I'm looking at this, and I'm just like, I just start thinking about the pyramids because of the Orion connection. Right. And I don't know if everyone out there knows about the Orion connection, but it was it was discovered by Robert Bouval. Um, I guess he kind of figured it out in like the 80s or yeah, it's like the late 70s or early 80s or whatever. Yeah. So he he had an astronomer buddy, and he was like, he he's like real big into Egypt, and he had been studying the the pyramid texts. Right. And he's also like a badass architect yeah yeah he was studying the pyramid text from the saqqara pyramids or whatever they're yes. called. is that how you pronounce them yeah saqqara yeah uh, which is also like not very well known texts but they they describe basically the like what's in the book of the dead or whatever it's, it's yeah, very plus similar. the king's list and yeah right and so he was trying to he was starting to get the idea that they were really uh not so much sun worshipers but they were star worshipers quote unquote <laughs> yeah. right it's not the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not the same thing. The sun's not a star. Of course, we've already freaking established that. <laughs> I'm making a long story out of this on purpose. So anyway, he uh, he was hanging out with an astronomer, or, or no, uh, not an astronomer, um, a guy who was a, like a ship captain, a friend of his who oh, okay. who sailed. He was just a a, he was an avid sailor. He was yeah. a navigator. Okay, he used the stars to navigate. And they're just hanging out one morning, and Orion's coming up, and the guy's like, "Yeah, so this is how you like, yeah. you, see, you see the position right there, and then like the stars down there, and you can use your hand when you spread it out like this, and you know you look at Orion's belt, blah blah blah." And then he's like, "But <clears throat> notice that Orion's belt, the three stars, they're not perfectly aligned. There's the two bright ones, they're in alignment, and the bottom one is just slightly offset." Yeah. And he's going to continue to explain, and Robert Bivol's like. Oh my God! Pyramids, <laughs> pyramids. Yeah, obviously he does a lot of thinking about pyramids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and his friends like, "What are you talking? What's the deal?" And he's do, like, do you have to bring up pyramids in every conversation? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're talking about space, exactly, dude. <laughs> I, I totally feel the guy, and I got the chills like when I got to that part of the book, dude. Yeah, yeah, no, it's badass. I was just like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> he's looking at those three stars, kind of as as I was the other night, and. The bottom one is like slightly shifted. Right. And it's also what's fascinating is like you can use the relative sizes of the pyramids as an indicator of uh, of the luminosity. Bright, yeah, the brightness. Yeah, that's exactly. great. that that's, part is badass. So the offset is exactly the same, but so is the the, the luminosity represented by size of the pyramid. That yeah, just is like it's freaking like, badass. What? So yeah, just to, to finish that real quick, but he he it caught him because he was everybody was wondering at the time yeah why they weren't in a straight line right and why how come the last guy built the smallest yeah, one yeah the last guy built the smallest like, pyramid and seems it was like shifted would, over to the to the east a little bit right and if they were <clears> ego <throat> projects it seems like you would be like well i can't build one as big as that so you kind of go off somewhere else to build your pyramid where it looks right. big not small next to those you know yeah <laughs> So yeah, he he figures this out and he's just like, holy shit, and he writes a paper about it. Not only that, but he figured out the the connection to the Nile and the and the Milky Way galaxy. 
Yeah, and then later I think him and Graham used the entire Orion constellation to locate uh, other related ruins in the area. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And they found two that were not were completely unknown. Yeah. yeah. And they're and they're also the 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 shafts in the pyramid. He. Oh yeah. yeah. They lined up to the other like four bright stars or something. In yeah. The, yeah. That's their right. angles. Yep. So anyway, well, kind of, kind of, yeah, at different <laughs> times. Well, I mean, because the, the the this is weird to me. The 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 shafts from the queen's chamber turn. Yeah, but the angles at the ba- that, that they start the, with in the chamber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I believe. I, th- I think. No, you're. I'm still yeah, in that part of. That's the book. what I'm assuming because they didn't know it turned. Uh, you know, right? They knew that it went up at this particular angle on both sides. And but nope. he actually got the one from Gantenbrink. Uh, Okay. Because that was the more accurate angle. So uh, what's his name? Rudolf? Rudolf Gantenbrink, Gantenbrink yeah. the German engineer who, who sent a little robot up the, yeah. up the tunnel <laughs> to, to explore it in the Queen's Chamber. Um, he actually measured the angle. Right. right? And, and that's, he was, what, that's what Bouval got, the more accurate one later that yeah. actually matched his theory. Right. His the- Originally, it was a little off or whatever. But still, it's like, what does that other angle point to? I guess... That's what I've always wondered. Like, Ganton Brink did that because, and I know I'm interrupting your story, but he did that because those tunnels didn't empty out on the outside of the pyramid. Right, right. And so they wanted to know where they went. And when he sent that robot up there the first time and saw that it turned to the left sharply and upwards or whatever, that was nobody knew that before that. Yeah. You know, and so I've always wondered, like, so what... They're still using the, the the angles that they start with, right? But yeah. the, the idea is that that the, those stars, like okay, because of precession, you have to rewind, you know, in time, and you can use like the the program Stellarium, yeah, or whatever, to go back in time and look at the position of the stars, right. which is like wh- where those. I, I don't think that the the small tunnel alignments are very accurate, yeah. okay? Because he Bouval was kind of like rewinding to a position to see. If oh, one yeah. line, and he would go back, you know, three thousand BC or whatever it is, mm. you know, two thousand six hundred BC or something, and check. Yeah, and it would be like, okay, yeah, it's really close to that one, and then a different one would be aligned at a different time, and the upper, the king's chamber ones that are higher in the pyramid, and so yeah. he was assuming because maybe it took twenty more years for them to build the rest of it up at the top. Where oh. the king's chamber is, and so those lined up at a different time in procession. Oh, a few degrees, or to what, give you an you know, indication what, of not even a degrees, a few minutes of arc. Yeah, to give you an indication of construction time. Or exactly, which is which is interesting. But yeah. Anyway, I got way you. off on a tangent. Um, so the Orion cor- correlation, the Orion connection with the with the pyramids is is that the the three main yeah. pyramids, he- the Great Pyramids, heavily skirt dirt, but skirt dirt by main mainstream archaeologists at the yeah. time, and still is kind of to this day. Yeah. But the positions of the three great pyramids, or are three great pyramids, yeah, whatever, yeah, um, the is the pyramids. same as the belt stars of Orion, and like Russ said, the the sizes of them are representative of luminosity of those stars, and then the position of the Nile is the same, according to the pyramids, as the Milky Way is to the belt stars of Orion. That's right. So I'm back to me standing there. In the early hours of the morning, looking at this, of course, <clears throat> I looked at Orion, and I first thing I thought was pyramids, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at the belt stars and their I mean, vertical. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> I mean, I'm just like, okay, those are pyramids. Yeah. So let me just imagine those being pyramids. And then I noticed this other thing that the that the position that Orion was in, the whole belt, the belt, and like a couple of other stars around it looked like a almost like a key. Yeah, a skeleton key thing. Yeah. And I started thinking of that like it's the key to what? It's like the key to, to the, the rest ab- of the sky. To the above opening the below. Yeah, the key <laughs> to the rest of the sky, yeah, right? Yeah. Or the key to the rest of the world. Yeah. The pyramids. I are. mean, it definitely was the key for the Orion constellation on the Giza plateau. Exactly. I mean, like they used it once you plug it in and you can then you can map the rest of the constellation out and find Go look at what's in the other stars' positions. Yeah. So my thought was, like, I started looking around the rest of the sky and seeing these other chunks of bright stars and trying to just forget, like, what we know are constellations or whatever, but just look at groups of yeah. these bright stars that are made into constellations. And I thought, what if we rewound the, star, the positions of the stars according to the position of Earth 
So that they match so the Giza. The, so they match the Giza alignments. The alignments on the pyramids and all that. And then go look around the globe at other sites. Like, for example, Easter Island was like the first one. That would be so easy. Yeah. Right? Easter Island. And then go to, like, on the computer model or whatever you're doing this with, go to Easter Island and look straight up or look on the horizon or however they appear. Yeah. If, and see if there's a constellation that's aligned with things on Easter Island or yeah. Easter Island itself. Or is there, you know, just all these other known ancient sites and see if they are at the same time. Okay. In the last podcast, you were talking about keystone cuts. Yeah. And the Cyclopean masonry masonry, yeah. and all of these, these things about the construction that is the same as it is in Giza, right? Yeah. And and we were speculating that that it's the same people. It's the same people that built all of that stuff around the same time. Like an entire culture decided yeah. they were going to build these structures in just such a way. Well, if we take Giza as an example, and it's the same people building the other ones, then they should do the same thing around the same time. I completely agree. Yeah. So to test the theory, I was I've been trying to figure this out. Like how how can I set up the Stellarium or whatever program, the stargazing pro program to where those stars are lined up to Giza, right? And then go to another known site in Stellarium and look in the same direction or the east or at the whatever on the equinox or whatever the hell it is. I think there's a way to, to tell Google Earth to give you the sky map on the globe so that you see it as a... As a... That's another thing I was looking up. Uh, there, from what I understand, it's there's a way to do overlays. Yeah. But, you know, so you'd have to get a, a star chart or something and overlay it. But I may be wrong. I've, I've, I've been trying to figure out how to do this. Well, I know I've seen actual physical, like, clear spheres that have the, uh, the all the stars on them. Like, if yeah, you were exactly. standing in the middle, you can look out and around or whatever. Exactly. And those will, will go over globes. Like, in other words, you get an actual freaking globe of the Earth, and you'll have right. this thing that you can overlay. So if you could do that in Google Earth... Yeah, ah, and that I would think be so I, badass. I like, know because I know in Google Earth you could tell it to go to Google Sky, and it'll basically turn around and you look up. Right, and I saw people asking this, like, is there a way to like overlay the star? Because I'm into archaeoastronomy, yeah, yeah, archaeoastronomy and all this kind of stuff. And like, and people are like, like, well, um, you can put no, you can put pictures. <laughs> you know, you can overlay a picture in Google Earth and this and that. Right, so that is possible. I've done that before, where you take photographs and you actually can insert them into Google Earth, and it will it will draw them in 3D. Right. The problem is, is that you have to have a sphere. Of the stars. Yeah. Well, you can only... Ch basically, what you have to do Otherwise, is you'd have to do, like, a Mercator projection of the freaking... <laughs> well, Google Earth will do that for you. <laughs> that would be badass. Like, what we would have to do is 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 check small amounts at a, at a time, because basically, you're yeah, going exactly. to be taking a flat image, and the Google Earth is going to be trying to wrap that image around the globe. Right. Uh, and I want to be able to, like, zoom around, flip it around. I, I want to do – I want exactly what you're saying, like a globe of stars over top of the globe. Yeah. And be able to spin them both independently. Right. So the reason why a, a regular – like getting that in an actual globe right now won't help us because we need to be able to rewind it back 20,000 right. years or whatever. So 12,000 yeah. years. I'm thinking right around 12,000 years or whatever. Yeah, well, whatever, the, whatever the time was – yeah, I think you're right. 12,000 years, whatever the time was when the Milky Way and everything lined up. Yeah, exactly. It yeah. mirrored it. Yeah. As above, so below. Like that. Okay, so <clears throat> I've been I've been freaking fantasizing about doing that <laughs> and becoming like Indiana Jones. Yeah, yeah. Um, then it occurred to me that like I could do that and start looking all around the world and all that. But another thing I could do on a smaller scale is look at all of the um, like the, for example, the. Moundville, Alabama, or whatever. Yeah, I've looked at that a couple of times. It's... Where there's all these little Indian sort of truncated earthen pyramid looking yeah. things, right? And the compass rose. And start doing the same thing that Buval did, but oh, just yeah. just looking for start, a correlation. Look look for look at constellations, major constellations, and just try to line them all up. And then if I find one that lines up, then start to do the processional shit to see when. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, dude. If if we found something like that here, it'd be easy to go to. It'd be easy yeah. to man that would piss them off. Check too. it out, and if there was a correlation between them, like that city that's in freaking 
Illinois or whatever. Uh, Cahokia? Yeah. And yeah. And Moundsville, you know, and all in the Serpentine Mound in Ohio and all that shit. Dude. Yeah. So I've I've been looking into it. I haven't haven't really uh, started doing the process, but I've been trying to, I've been, you know, asking the oracle of all the possible ways I might be able to do this. Well, I, I can definitely say that Moundsville, no matter what mainstream says about it, is going to be astronomical. I mean, they have a fucking compass rose on the ground. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's the cardinal directions. Yeah. Which is like, that means that they were astronomers. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. All right, so if any of you listeners out there beat us to it, Freaking send me a link. <laughs> send me a link. That's right. Record it all. <laughs> yeah, so probably Rockwall. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, well, what else might be older? What else might line up? Yeah. Is really all I was getting at. Okay, so last thing on this subject. Not the last. We always say that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> while I was looking for overlaying stars onto, you know, the, the world or whatever, I, I find this news story. This, like, 14-year-old kid. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I, I damn it. <laughs> I sent you the link to that. Did you read it? Yeah, that was really cool. But the all the skirptards, dude. Like, yeah. He, okay, so he gets, he's interested in Mayan culture. And he's like, yeah, I'm just wondering, like, why do the Mayans build these cities, like, so far from water? Yeah. So far from coastlines, so far from a river or whatever, just out in the middle of nowhere for no reason. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. So then he started thinking, like, well, maybe there's, like, like some correlation with the stars or something. Cause I know they, they were quote unquote star worshipers or yeah. whatever. <laughs> so he, he gets these badass star charts from somewhere. Uh, some institution like hooked him up with them and then probably some, uh, and then NASA gave him like badass yeah. digital Im- or images of, of the earth in down in the Yucatan and in Mexico. Okay, and yeah, that. and you can buy those from like from like Digital Globe and shit like that. Yeah. You can purchase like really awesome satellite pictures. So he yeah. starts lining up these constellations over these Mayan cities and finds out that like it, there's certain alignment and it didn't say anything about procession and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so I was but but it doesn't really matter. This kid puts a constellation on one of the major Mayan cities, some major constellation. And then he looks over to this other major Mayan city, and there's another major constellation right there. And then he looks uh, over to another major Mayan city, and there's another major constellation right there. And he's like, holy shit, mm-hmm. all these Mayan cities are lining up with major constellations. <laughs> and so he finds this other major constellation. That doesn't have a city. And it's in jungle. Yeah. And he get that's when he gets the high-resolution maps and zooms in, and there's this freaking square, <laughs> like <laughs> a defined square in the jungle that you can see. Nice. And... It looks like it's just, it's just all green, but there's this, sh- like definite right angles, yeah. square, and the, and the skirptards are like, that's yeah. like a 100 year old like old field that was yeah. there, and it's like, dude, that's out in the middle of, of nowhere. fucking it nowhere. Yeah, fields don't last in the jungle <laughs> unless there's a shitload of stone on it. <laughs> but one of the guys who lives in Guatemala who like skirp derped it, sent. Uh, an image that had a circle around this one. He was like, this one is near me and it's only like, you know, 60 or 80 years old or what. And it was just like, the, it was it not square. Look. It was just like this like shitty little junk. No, same thing. <laughs> same <laughs> thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, um, and the other people that were like, wow, really good. Yeah. Good, Johnny. But, you know, we all know that <laughs> the minds didn't lie. I mean, if you were... Pretty much, there's so many constellations in the sky that you could just like Float lay out anywhere. constellations, and of course, all the cities are gonna line up. Like that was one of the other arguments. I was just oh like, my Jesus God. Christ! There's billions of stars up there, so of course, cities are gonna line up. <laughs> you know, that's it's those people that they are the reason for low hanging fruit. That's true. And so I'm glad that they're there. That. I just like laugh at them and I'm like hoping that that kid didn't listen to any of that bullshit. Yeah. One guy was like, maybe you'll go to college and like then actually after learn, you get yeah. your degree, you'll do some like real work yeah. with th- these obviously great, you know, uh, intentions that you have. Yeah. And I'm just like, wow. I remember the nice compliment. One of the women that were was in one of the uh, archaeology groups that I was in that I talked about, I think, last time. Um. She, well, 
it was kind of the group like but she did most of the work and she was the one that got us she was like hey help us out help me out with this or whatever and she got us all looking in these areas but anyway she was all over the new i mean over global news for discovering a pyramid in egypt wow that was a completely unknown out in the desert right using google google earth or whatever and we oh, yeah. we were kind of all involved in that she was like yeah so like i think there's something out you know and she's like can you go look at it? I'm like i go look at it. i'm like yeah that's that's probably a probably a pyramid i mean you know <laughs> they look like they look like mounds <clears throat> Yeah. Or they call them tells there. Um, because it's Tell a te- it, it tells you that that's where humans have been. But from yeah. from the ground level, if you look at them, they they all kind of look like a, a sort of symmetrical hill. But you don't know if it's a pyramid or if that's just multiple layers of city. Yeah, yeah. They kind of look the same. And in Guatemala, I mean, I've got pictures of uh, – I've got pictures from expeditions to like – Brand new, like just brand new, newly discovered Maya. Like they went out to to this place where they, that somebody had reported there was probably a Maya, some kind of Mayan shit out there. So they went, they had an expedition out there and they got lost and found a different one. <laughs> Hell yeah. And they're like, oh, here it is. And they're like, take a picture. And one guy's like, wait, this is, this is not it. <laughs> but it, yeah. So the, and then they found the other one. So anyway, I've got pictures and. So obviously that this is before any kind of work has been done on them. They've just been out there in the jungle and the pyramids look like uh, really steep, tall hills with covered in, I mean, they're all, it's covered in green shit. Like and they actually found some stone walls to take pictures of, but they are also completely green. Yeah. Totally covered in moss and lichen. And, you know, I mean, even that fuzzy, the, the real fuzzy, like kind of moss that grows out, it, they just look, you could tell they're stones because you can kind of see where the cracks are, but yeah. it's just, it looks alive. Yeah, it's so badass. And then, like, yeah, you remember what the one we went to in Guatemala? Um, there were two or three of the the main temples that had been, or whatever they are, the pyramids that had been cleaned off. They yeah. were still covered in rubble, but all the jungle shit was off them. But off in the darkness in the yeah. jungle, you could see more of these hills that were just green and you know, same height. They don't look like pyramids, is what I'm saying. So yeah. whenever I like, I see this kind of shit, and somebody's like, "That doesn't look like a pyramid at all." I'm like, "Of course it doesn't." Have you ever seen a pyramid before it gets cleaned up to where it looks like a pyramid again? They don't look like pyramids. Yeah. That's just a hill. Yeah, they look like hills. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> What's that one that they thought was just a big ass mountain or something? Oh, the one in Mexico? <laughs> and they they like built the cathedral on it? Yeah, there's a cathedral on top that they built out of these like, wow, these stones are really nice and <laughs> yeah. square. They were yeah. pulling them off the top of the pyramid to build this freaking cathedral. Yeah. Yeah, now you can get pictures of it where you basically see, and the cathedral's massive. It's yeah. a gigantic Spanish cathedral, cross-shaped, you know, or whatever, humongous. When you get up to it, the huge doors that are like 18 feet high. But when you back away and take a picture of the hill with the, the cathedral on top of it, it looks like a toy. And then the hill is just this huge thing. And then down at the base of the hill where they've been digging, you see the feet of the fucking pyramid. And you're just like, god. oh my god. And it's a... It's are a, they still excavating that? Yeah. I mean, they have... Two of the corners dug. Where out. is that? It's uh, it's it's somewhere in Mexico? in Mexico. Yeah. God. And nobody. Why knows. Why aren't we Mexicans? I know. No. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> nobody knows who built it. I I remember reading at some point that that was connected to, a, uh, like a New World Babel story. One of the um. one of the anthropologists that was down there started get in that area was getting Babel stories, like that that they had built this immense tower that was going to the heavens or whatever. And he was like, this sounds a lot like, you know, so he was thinking there was corruption, like that, that had, that they had picked this up. In other words, from us, right. From, from Europeans or whatever, but he traced it down to its roots or whatever. And he's like, no, this is original to here. How is Babel? How is the story of Babel here in the new world before it's pre Columbian? Yeah. Right. And that led to the discovery of this, this thing. Cause <laughs> so he's like, you're saying that was the pyramid. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> That's so freaking badass. Yeah. But that then you that begs the question like why did the Spaniards build the why did the Jesuits put the cathedral up there? They fucking knew. Yeah, they probably knew. They fucking knew. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a classic move. Yeah. Build your God's temple on top of their God's temple. Right. In their sacred space, yeah. Mm-hmm. Whether there's a temple there or not. Yeah, you either knock theirs down and build yours or just put your temple there so that, because people will continue to come to the sacred spot. And it'll just be in your temple. Wow. <sighs> I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's cultural appropriation. <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah, all this all this stuff, the ideas with the like ways to find ancient sites. Um, I don't know why I didn't think of that because it's a really good idea to to get the align correlation, line everything up, and then look to see and just cruise around the world and look everywhere else. And I bet you that because I'm kind of coming, to, I'm I'm kind of like in agreement with Jesus Gamara with the whole like Hanan Pacha and, and like the Udu Pacha that you know that there's three different stages of yeah construction, like. I think that the old, the oldest stuff, the humongous shit, is pre, pre end of ice age. It's like, it's like, it's like Gunan Padding, thirty thousand, you know, yeah, twenty twenty to thirty thousand years old. So, so the, the Giza connection, would be the later, the the second stage. So there might, what I'm trying to say is there might be an earlier correlation star map, different configuration right. that we could also look at to get the older ruins. Right. That's why I was thinking. Like originally, I was thinking uh, line it up or line it up with with the Giza pyramids. Yeah. And then go around the world and look at everything else. And you might be able to to discover. Or you could, if things lined up. Yeah. You could theorize that they were built around the same epoch. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> then you, some of the some of these other ones that don't line up, like you know, if Baalbek doesn't line up or some shit like that, yeah. then you figure something else out with that. Right. And see if it lines up with other megalithic structures similar or whatever. If yeah, the yeah. ones that don't line up, change the configuration and maybe they line up in a different way, which will tell you processionally what age those are. Yeah, exactly. Like it's, it's a it's a freaking, it's a time map. Yeah. See, and I, I've been thinking about this because we, um, oh, we need to take a break. Okay. Yeah. Well, you've my, been my job is watching that. the clock. You're just going to keep thinking about that. Then. <laughs> yeah. I just interrupt my own question. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Taking over my job. You took my job. <laughs> I took your snake. gone but we're back snake bros snakes high atop the edwards plateau we hail from the 10 by 10 by 10 tangent cube of science <laughs> talking about pyramids first time 30 percent brain increase guaranteed <laughs> <laughs> half of our pyramids tied behind our backs just to make it square that's right so i was going to ask a question or it wasn't really a question but i've been thinking about this and you actually were the one you kind of like I wasn't done with my intro, man. Oh, fuck. Sorry, keep going. I'll, I'll... Yeah, first time we've ever <laughs> talked about pyramids. <laughs> Episode 20. <laughs> we got a hurricane coming. It's coming. It's on the way. 130 mile an hour winds heading up on the Texas coast. Coming in tonight. And so we're trying to knock all this shit out. Before we die. Before we die. <laughs> we had a we had a, a solar eclipse. And now we have a, an apocalypse. That's right. We had a solar eclipse, then we had a plague of locusts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now, now the, the giant storm with the flood is coming. So it's very biblical these days. And we watched the solar eclipse with a welding hood. <laughs> and it was good. That's right. I watched it in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyways, on to your question. I was actually done, but that was a good Yeah, <laughs> we, should, we should actually have signals <laughs> for that. Because I know yeah. we've interrupted each other before. How about this one? <laughs> semaphore yes <clears throat> i'm totally down for that okay so yeah so you've pointed this out s several times like when you were saying okay so like why do we always when we were talking about the maps or whatever right so we we're talking about these the possibility of these ancient peoples having discovered antarctica and somehow mapped its coastline or whatever right and so then the, the automatic you're like well why is the automatic assumption that they mapped it when it was ice free because right. they, because people automatically assume well they couldn't have done it when the ice was there because that would mean they have technology or whatever right, right? so like I'm starting we'll, to we'll only l allow them the minimum technology that's required to do whatever they did right and which is which is a, a fine not fine but that's that's a that's an 
an it's under- a safe move. It's an understandable place to, to begin in terms of thinking about what the culture is. But the fact that there is zero consideration that they could be more advanced than that right. is the problem. It was like, okay, so yes, this pyramid building was extremely hard, and they barely <laughs> did it <laughs> with the tools that they had. Yeah, but in 20 years, even though the, uh, the other one in South America took 200. Yeah. Yeah, this is bullshit. So I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. no. So because you've, you've done that several times where you're like, well, so why do we do this? Why do we always assume... You know, we need to come up with a term for that. Like you, you're, you're assuming lowest tech. Yeah, you're butt flapping them. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you're butt flapping them. That's perfect. So when you're butt flapping in culture, it means you're assuming the lowest tech level that they could possibly have to achieve whatever it is they're doing. That's, that's called right. that's butt flapping. Okay. So you're so you're so we're looking at these. We're gonna we're gonna put a star map on the globe, align it with the Giza pyramids, and then. And then we're going to, if we find all these correlations to sites, we can't assume that those sites were built at any particular time because presumably this culture may have been, they could have built the sites to match. I see. Yeah. So like, I don't think it's a good, I mean, I know that conventionally this is assumed as dating, but why? Like what? Because they assume that they could only have mirrored the sky as it was exactly then and not have projected into the future. And that's, so I have the same problem with the idea of the, of the, uh, the little tunnels in the Great Pyramid. Oh, yeah. Where they're like, okay, well, the tunnels in the King's Chamber don't really align to Orion's stars unless you fast forward a little bit, like 20 years. Right, because that's assuming that they can only match it to whatever the star the exactly. Sky is. Exactly. So, yeah. but, but it is a cool idea to think, well, they knew of precession, they understood it, and they used it as a marker to, sh- to, to embed in the building the time that it was begun and the time that it was finished. Right. To give know, you a progression. Yeah. That's cool. That is cool. Yeah. Because that, that doesn't assume the least, you know. For me, the the fact that the Queen's Chamber shafts start turning within yeah, the body kind completely of just out. kind of eliminated the whole idea that they were star markers. Right. Agreed. I mean, the King's Chamber shafts might be because they go straight up and out. And they definitely weren't air shafts. But the thing is, is they don't actually go straight up and out either. Like, But it, that's another problem with it is that those shafts align to a different time period than the full alignment of the three Giza pyramids. Right. Which with is, the, yes. With the Milky Way. Exactly right. And by thousands and thousands of years. Because I think that alignment is right around 12,000 years ago. The I might be wrong about that. Which one? Where, where, where everything mirrors the Milky the Nile. Way, yes. Yeah, it all that, mirrors. You're right. That one's it. 11,500 BC. Basically, when Gubekli Tepe was built. That's right. Which yeah. Gubekli Tepe, like you're saying, this is throwing bone at your fucking argument here, <laughs> uh, has the thing that's pinpointing our time. Right, which indicates right? that they could. Yeah, exactly right. So you're, yeah. Yeah, so this, the, but the, the, the reason why some people like the fact that the, the, these shafts point, seem to point to stars that, okay, so this is how they have to do it. First, you have to say, well, what stars were important to the Egyptians? Right. And then you say, OK, so like we look, do these ever point at them at the same time? And, you know, and so they found a couple of correlations that are, like you said, they're not exact, but they're close or whatever. And they're very close in time to when mainstream archaeology says the pyramid is built. Right. Which is why it's being kept. I think that's why it's being kept around. It's kind of like throwing them a bone like, look, here, look, you guys are kind of right. Sort of maybe, yeah. you know, in a way, because what because what Baval and Hancock now think is that is that the Giza Plateau was laid out. Everything on it was laid out. The foundations and everything were set up. And then the pyramid actually was begun. And maybe it was a truncated or maybe it was a, a, a step pyramid or something like that. But right. then later on, you know, somebody the came. casing f- stones yeah. and all that. Well, yeah. No, I think, I, I think he says that something was begun. And then in the period near where the mainstream archaeology says, that's when it was actually co- built. Right, completed it or whatever. And that's because of the star sh- of because of these shafts or whatever. And I'm just like, maybe, you know, but I, just, I, don't, I don't know. The fact that the shafts down in the Queen's Chamber start turning and everything, I'm just yeah. like, okay, so there's something else happening here. And I don't think we'll know what those straight shafts that go all the way out to the outside of the pyramid, we, won't, we can't know what those are until we find out where the other ones fucking go. Right. And Which they don't, they don't want to do. They don't. Right. And I mean, the idea that they just, like, it's, this may be too much to get into now, but the structure around each one of those shafts is incredibly complex. It isn't just, they didn't just bore a hole through the stone. They actually had to build 
a megalithic block structure that's actually tilted at the angle that the shaft's tilted and then run it through all the layers of construction. Yeah, it's insane. And and so you, then you have to do a bunch of shit like dovetailing so that the because so otherwise they won't slide out. Right. Because yeah. otherwise your entire shaft construction, all those megalithic blocks. Come so the te- blocks have like this crazy like little stair step sort of thing that as they're going up. Right. And the depth, it's just it's insane. Like, right. Uh, and you have to do that through every fucking layer of of construction. So you're like you got all these presumably this crew out there and they're putting down layer after layer of megalithic blocks that are that are non-homogenous right so the blocks are all different sizes and shapes or whatever and then you have this like 30 to 45 degree angle thing also made of megalithic blocks that is like coming up through that in in four places yeah so there's and then put this in perspective (laughs) the the standard model says that it was built in 20 years. Yeah. And there's 6 million blocks, or more than 6 million blocks in the pyramid. So that yeah. requires that they had cut from the quarry, moved, and laid a block every two minutes. Right. That's right. So you're doing all of this that you're describing. That would kill that. people, yeah. That would kill people trying to get them up there because you would be running, there would be traffic jams. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's just, impossible. But the, the well, with, with butt flaps and, and <laughs> freaking toothpicks and shit. Yeah, I, I've been talking to Dad about this. Actually, he pulled out, he busted out some old pictures, and I'm talking about like these are old school people printed on paper. They're yellowing oh now. Yeah, like I was actually, he was like, I'm gonna show you some photographs. I was like, Where's your, where's your laptop? <laughs> <laughs> he pulled out these little squares. I'm like, What are, what are those? <laughs> is this some kind of new technology? Oh, you're showing me a book. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, is this like a postcard? <laughs> anyway, so he had pictures of this old job that he did, um, and he was like, Yeah, so I, you know, we we've, we've kind of been talking about giant blocks and. And lifting things or whatever. And he's like, so I want to show you this. And he had these, and I know this is a big tangent, but I wanted to remember to put this in the show. Um, he was building, he was in the, he was in a project where they were building a, um, it was a, I think it was a UPS. Okay. So it was a UPS distribution center, right? So it isn't multi-levels or whatever, but it's, it's just one gigantic, massive, like Walmart style warehouse building. Okay. It's all one floor, but it's just huge sprawling thing. And then on down one side, it's where all the trucks plug into the, you know, like you, if you've yeah. ever gone in the back of a big dis- distribution store buildings, you'll see these big square docks where, where semi trucks back in and they dock the back of their trailer with the building. Okay. So he's showing me the construction of this UPS building where it's the same deal. And they've got this one whole side of the building is just rows at, like of those square docks just do, do, yeah. do, 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 going all the way down. And the, the docking ports were pre poured. They were pre construct they were, you know. So in other words, they built they built the forms or whatever and they poured them laying flat and they had to stand them up. Yeah. Okay. And he's like, so look at this thing. Okay. And he I can't remember what he said it weighed, but it was he was like, so this is just one it was it's the concrete for the dock of one truck. Okay. It's 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 nothing like any of these blocks that we're looking at that are made of basalt or the ones that ball back or whatever but he's like so here's what we had to do and he showed me pictures where they had this immense crane for the job he was like so to make this work we basically had to drive the, tr- the crane over to where it was sit- standing right next to this thing that we were about to- and we we're just going to stand it up yeah it had to be right next to it. we took every stick off the crane boom so that it was just the freaking yeah just the right so then it would just like went up and like the cable went straight down to this thing and that's how they and then when he- they started lifting up you could see the back of the crane coming off the ground Holy okay, shit. just to li- pick up that one con- pre- pre-poured concrete dock door. And he's like, so you look at that, and now you tell me, like, how they fucking move those blocks at Ballbeck. And I'm like, holy shit. Because, <laughs> like, he was like, this is a, this is, this crane is a, he, I can't remember what he said, what he said it was. Like, it was a 350-ton something. I mean, it was, a, it was a, you could tell it was massive, huge tracks, gigantic, massive crane or whatever. But it starts to pick, and they took every stick off the boom, which, if you don't know, makes it so that it has there's less leverage so that the the whatever heavy thing you're picking up can't tilt the train the crane over right because right. the boom just goes up like 20 feet and stops right they took every stick off of it which the boom basically allows you to reach way out over the building so but they just <laughs> they had to drive the crane doors right over top of this thing and they start picking it up it still like comes off the ground in the back Golly. and he's like yeah so i you look at that and you start thinking about how they move those giant blocks and you're just like aliens yeah <laughs> That was the other thing he told me is like when when whenever they go to set up a crane yeah for moving like massive loads anytime yeah you got to have level ground right perfectly level ground yeah level ground i mean if it's like if it's slightly it off level bumpy, it's okay. whatever, yeah yeah <clears throat> they've got outriggers 
Yeah. But they have to level that crane. Right. And then you look at the sides of these hills that, like, those blocks from American ball back are just laying on the side. It's yeah, like, no. in the mountains. <laughs> or the ones that, like, the ones at Ollantaytambo or in, Mach- in Peru, they're, where they're basically, it's a, it's a kilometer down from the site, from the yeah. quarry to the, to the river. They cross the river, and it's a kilometer back up the other side. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> and they're on these little trails or whatever. Yeah, that's what, yeah. So it, there's no sign. Like, when we do huge construction projects, we flatten everything in the area. Well, they did flatten the limestone hillock. Yeah. At Giza. At Giza, it was flattened. Uh, and they put all those, like, the basalt, basalt. The basalt fillers, blocks yeah. Blocks around on the outside, around the borders of the pyramid. There's all this basalt that's sitting on top of the limestone, and the limestone is, like, contoured. Yeah. And the basalt makes it level and flat. Yeah. That, I, that'd be interesting if they had a crane. You yeah. Know, like, they had some kind of crane, and they leveled the ground there to use it. Yeah. I, you know, I've, I've wondered about that, too, because... Because there's grooves in that basalt that look like freaking diamond saws, you yeah. know? Like, like it, yeah, grooves where it's like somebody cut too far. They cut past yeah. the thing they were cutting, which, like, you don't... If you're using rope and sand, you probably don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Two but, days later, oh, Oh, shit. whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, we cut way too far. Whoa. Slow down, buddy. <laughs> Two days later. <laughs> slow, slow down. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well... And measure, I, measure once, cut for five days. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you you measure twice if yeah. you're going to cut for five days because damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, in that case, you're always like, you know, let's let's cut, let's do it on the short side because, you know, cutting it again is going to take fucking forever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whereas normally now we're like, cut it long. You can always cut it down again. No. Back then they're like, cut it short, bro. <laughs> <laughs> cutting it takes way too fucking long. <laughs> anyway, uh, I've wondered about that basalt filler those are huge slabs yeah of basalt like nobody ever talks about that about the the fact that the that the entire giza plateau somebody cut it off that's another thing they they only talk about the six plus million blocks that are in the pyramid itself the great pyramid the great pyramid yeah. yeah they're like oh it took them 20 years to do that but there's all this other shit like all around it that they had to do too right plus all the all the the uh, all the rock cut stuff that's down in the plat in the plateau, like that the yeah. what is the cave of Osiris or whatever. Yeah, it's a shaft dropping down, and then they found hundred feet down. Yeah, and then they found these huge, and it probably goes much more extensive than that. They just it got it, there's water down there. It's hundred feet down to that to that little antechamber that has the quote unquote tomb of Osiris. Or yeah. Um, then they found those huge rock cut tombs for the boats. Yeah. The gigantic boats that are like totally yeah. seaworthy. Those were, yeah, solar boats. Yeah, solar boats. <laughs> <laughs> right. With a high keel for those big That's solar right. waves. That's right. You got freaking space waves, yeah. which is kind of right. <laughs> but yeah, I, I've always wondered about the, that basalt on, on Giza. Like, what, like, think about this. So much other stuff on Giza was, was cased. You know, like the 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 pyramid of the small pyramid. I can never pronounce it. it starts with an M. Minkare. Minkare, yeah. Um, which also, by the way, somebody tried to destroy. It. Have you seen it? Have you looked at it? Like some no. some uh, caliph or somebody decided that it needed to be fucking destroyed. Yeah, because slaves built it. <laughs> <laughs> destroy that. Yeah, so he sent his slaves to go destroy it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And like, That's what needs to happen. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. But there's this deep rift in the side of the, well, not really. It's, it, there's, a, there's basically like a, a, a crack in the pyramid construction. And they worked on it for like, I don't know. They were using blasting. They were using explosives that they had and all this shit. And they worked on it for like almost a year. And they were able to make this like kind of little, little, little cut, cra- cut, little crack in the side. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Calvin was like, all right, fuck it. It's too hard. <laughs> Get back to your slaves. Yeah. Let's go crush some clay tablets. <laughs> yeah, Damn that's it. way easier. Can stomp on those things. <laughs> but uh, the Let's bottom, north. <laughs> yeah, the bottom of that pyramid. If you if you look at it, not maybe I could put some of these pictures in the show notes. But if you look at the the bottom levels, basically around the base of that pyramid, the casing stones for that one are still there. Some of the so all the pyramids have casing stones remaining at the lowest levels because because when the when all of the casing stones were being stolen off of them the bottoms of the pyramids were buried presumably ah. okay so so there's some remaining at the top of the of the uh pyramid of of uh kafre 
not the Great Pyramid, but the other one. Yeah. There's casing stones up there at the top that nobody's got the balls to go get. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, if you pull one loose, that whole thing's coming down on you. So, but at the bottom, there's there's levels. But if you look at the the casing stones on the pyramid of uh, how'd you say it? Min- Min- Minkare. Minkare. I think I, I don't know how to pronounce that it. That sounds it's... right. I can I can see the word in my mind, but I can never figure out how to pronounce it. I yeah, can't Minkare. see the word, but <laughs> so the casing stones. <laughs> You can't see the word? <laughs> but I've listened to enough audiobooks. I've, I don't know how it's spelled. It. <laughs> right. And I, I'm pretty sure that's how it's... <laughs> that's interesting. So you listen to the books and you're like, I know how to say it. I don't know I how to spell, spell it. it. I don't know no, what it looks like. <laughs> I'm like, well, I know what it looks like, but I don't know how to fucking M-E-N-K-R-A. say it. M-E-N-K-R-A. <laughs> K-A-R-A. There's... Kare. Yeah. <laughs> ben Kare. <laughs> anyway, the casing stones at the bottom of that pyramid... Looked like they came straight from Peru. They looked like they stay, came straight from Saxawaman. They're the they're the weird bulbous pillowy. Oh yeah, yeah. And they have the the same knobs and shit. No shit. Yeah, they look just like that, and they're granite. Okay, so... fucking granite. The ones the ones in Peru are are limestone. Some of them, I mean, there is granite ones, but like all of all of uh, of of uh, Saxawaman or whatever is made of limestone. Machu Picchu is made of limestone, but then there's like some. Badass granite. Stone, yeah, there's there's mountain granite up there in the middle, but but yes, so the 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 casing stones around the bottom, the granite casing stones around the bottom of the Minkare pyramid look look like they came straight from Peru. I mean, just fucking straight up. They it looks just like it. <sighs> we gotta line up that star map, buddy. So what I'm saying about that is that so much thing, so many things were cased on Giza that I wonder if that basalt casing on the plateau itself is also later casing because it's in the same style. Oh, okay. The, the limestone's eroded and contoured yeah. and they freaking shaped the the the, grav- uh, the granite to fit it, right? So you could say, well, well, the, the basalt paving stones on the plateau itself were the inspiration for the people that came along later and did the casing. They're like, oh, look at that. We'll do the same thing on these old structures. No. It's because they needed to use their butt flap crane, Russ. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> it was, it was leather, the most it was ad- leather thongs and reeds. <laughs> it was the most advanced butt <clears throat> flap crane known to man, though. <laughs> it was like, yeah, it had no wheels, right. of course. Butt flaps don't have wheels. That's right. They were sleds. <laughs> yeah, it was sleds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, You're like, put, put, yeah. We got this giant block picked up with this crane. How do we move it? Okay, get a million guys over here, and we'll drag the crane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make sure they all have butt flaps. Yeah. We need a million dudes and butt flaps over here, we're going to drag this crane. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought that like maybe original the original con- builders like flattened the plateau, and then all the, you know. Yeah, it started And then it's, it gets lost, and all this time happens, and all this rain and shit, and then that actually digs huge gouges into the limestone platform. And then whoever came along later and cased everything also did that casing part there. Because I don't, I guess a good, an easy way to check that is any, is any of that basalt casing underneath the pyramids? Because I don't think yeah. they are. I don't think it is. I don't know. There's also those weird freaking massive stone gears. <laughs> bowl, yeah. Bowl gears. Yeah. And they're made they're of crystals. Around. They're like, and they're like yeah. gigantic single crystalline things or whatever. And like, you're like, how did they even carve that? Like. I don't know. And they're weird. But they look like gears. Yeah. They look like cogs like yeah. of some kind. Yeah. They have the, like, cogs that have the posts instead of the gear teeth. Right? Like, it's the posts all facing down. And it's like, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Because, like, when you look at them, they've got these yeah. round knobs in the inside. Yeah. The, yeah. There's just all this weird shit laying around all over the ground. and uh, Yeah. What about those rock cut? They don't even talk about that shit. That's my point, is that, like, they... They yeah, they talk was, about like, okay, well, it took him 20 years to build this pyramid because he was doing it because it was a tomb. <laughs> You're like, yeah, but what? What's all this stuff? What is all this other shit? Yeah. Laying around, giant stone gears. Yeah. Well, and <clears throat> some of it looks like it reminds me of the high Andes again, where you see that like these giant megalithic blocks are just fucking thrown everywhere. Like, yeah. Or the, there's. And there's gears over there too. There's yeah. like, there's that one that's like freaking 
30 feet long. It's yeah. like a straight gear, like, like you know, the type that would lay down and you'd have a round gear that would roll, roll along in it. it. Yeah. It's just laying out there. It's just massive freaking stone yeah. and it's got these freaking perfect cogs in it. Right. And those are also found in Peru. Cut like the, <clears throat> the cog teeth cut into the side of the mountain. Yeah. And sometimes they'll be round. Like, like they look like they were cores taken out. Sometimes they're perfect cubes. The teeth are perfect cubes or whatever, just yeah. like running along the side That's of this. crazy. But there are also, in Giza, there are also like miniature temples. That's what I thought of them when I first saw them. They, they, somebody was showing me pictures in one of the archaeology groups. She's like, well, look at, what do you think of these? And I'm like, uh. So it's like, imagine, like picture a, like a, a shrine, you know, a, 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 a temple that you can enter. It's, it's kind of taller than it is wide. Right, it's got this sort of imposing whatever. It's got this high peaked roof, all this designs on it and shit or whatever. And then there's the interior, but it's actually just like if you if you walked inside of it, you would fill it up. Okay, so it's a miniature. It's like a model. <clears throat> yeah. And it's made out of one stone. Wow. So they cut and carved this thing out of a single block, and they're just pristine, perfect. But they're and they're everywhere. There's a bunch of them, and they've they're a bit, they've been thrown everywhere, laying on their sides. They've got holes. They're broken open, you know. And it's like, what, what the fuck? What the fuck were those? They don't look anything like anything that's constructed in Egypt anywhere. They just, there's no columns. There's no. They they look more like chess pieces. <laughs> yeah, or they or they look more like like cathedrals that we would build or that they would build in the in the Middle Ages. Like you know, they, huh. they had these tall, imposing facades and steeples and shit like that. I'm I've been wondering, like, is this where they got the idea? For, the, for that shape of the temple? Because, yeah. like, there's just these models in Egypt. They I don't know if they were models. They could actually have been single-person shrines. But no one knows what they are. And in some in some of the literature, I found that they were plated in gold on the inside. You know, oh, using shit. those little... They use those little bronze fucking nails. They actually... Somebody drilled tiny holes in the stone. And they would put a massive gold plate, like a... Like foil gold foil up on the wall and they would hold it in place with tiny little bronze nails into the fucking holes in the stone. Oh man. So That's they would insane. wallpaper their pyramids with gold. <laughs> <laughs> I want some wall metal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, are they Faraday cages? Because a, a completely encased gold room would be a Faraday cage. Yeah. Could be. Uh, That's a good idea. <clears throat> yeah, I've still been listening to a lot of David Hatcher Childress. He asks all these questions too, you know. Like, <laughs> he talks about the obelisks. He's like, so this is like, he talks about Tesla or whatever and his towers and shit. And he's like, so here's one An ancient tower. It's made of crystal, you know. Uh, these were put all over the world. <laughs> no one knows what they were, uh, what, what, what they were for. <laughs> Could this been of some kind of, you know, Ancient power source? Some kind of giant <laughs> network of... <laughs> yeah. And then he points out the Blair Cuspids, which is also like... That's... The Blair Cuspids is... <clears throat> you, can look, you can look it up. Uh, are a series of what must be like obelisk style towers on the moon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've... I didn't know they were called that. I've heard about towers on the moon, seen some pictures. Yeah, you could. <clears throat> you can't see them because of the same colors, everything, but you can see their shadows. Yeah. And you look at the shadows of everything around there, big boulders and craters and shit like that, and then you see these real long, you know, real, you see these little bitty things, but then they, each one of them has this long, narrow fucking shadow that sticks off that's pointy. Yeah. You know, and you're like, okay, so that that must be a tower. It's Yeah, it's tall. It can't cast <laughs> that fucking long-ass shadow unless it's really fucking tall. And so, like, somebody was... Somebody took a picture where they were able to say, okay, so here are the sun's over here, do the azimuth calculations or whatever, figure out how long the shadows will be, and then they were able to draw, make a 3D map of it, and it looks like it looks like a, like one giant one, and then like f a, they're arrayed in a grid, smaller ones around it or whatever, and he's like, so... Tent stakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, the circus has come to the moon! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They needed shade. Yeah. Yep. Then there's also one on Phobos, one of Mars's moons, a giant tower. Mm. Same deal where you've got a picture and you see the a little square, but then going off of it is this long fucking dark shadow. So you know it's tall as fuck. Uh, I'm like, how come they don't ever take pictures of these from the side? 
<laughs> like you can orbit Phobos 50 feet above its surface. <laughs> Why do we only have a picture of that tower directly overhead? So we just see a little <laughs> tiny square. <laughs> yeah. The two dim dimensional projection of the 3D yeah. object. <clears throat> yep. So, uh, yeah, we definitely need to try that, the, the star correlation thing. Yeah. And I really want to do it with, with some of the stuff around here just to see, because if there is a connection, bam, like right. uh, that would be huge in and of itself, but yeah. it would also, we would die. Tell us <laughs> where to get lost and die. Yeah. I think that. I mean, you're, this. I, I want to know if this is what you're thinking. So we like we try to we try to set it, we try to match it up, and then we, and then we look to see does it correlate to any other known ancient sites, and then if it does, we can start looking. So that's elsewhere. right. Um, because okay, so I was looking up the Serpentine Mound, and it it correlates with this. Somebody uh, made the connection of uh, Draconis or yeah, something. Yeah, Draconis. The the constellation. Yeah. Draco. That it, it looks like it represents Draconis or whatever. And according to Procession, it was something like it should be 5,000 years old. Uh -uh. The Serpentine Mound, which they're okay. like, of course they were like, <laughs> <laughs> no. Think that's too old? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they think it's, you know, they think it's way younger than that. 5,000 years old? Yeah. Well, I Not mean. Not here. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I, I don't know. It's still in the Neolithic, so. Yeah, but they Maybe. weren't building, quote unquote, building stuff. That was yeah. like way too early. Yeah. I guess so. I mean, even though on Malta, they're like, well, in the Neolithic, <clears throat> they were building all those giant temples. But yeah, there's, this is here. Yeah, here. They're not the like, No, no, no. Here, like, because, because people had to come from there to get here because mm -hmm. there was no one here. Right. And they had to do that in the Bering Land Bridge. Everybody came over the Bering Land Bridge, and that's it. That's right. And they fought. All of the Pleistocene giant or short-faced cave bears on the way. Because yeah. that's where they lived. And they killed all of them. Yeah. And, and then, then they, they got, killed... They got over here and they're like, that was the badass. Bears. Let's kill all the mammoths. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they killed all of the megafauna. Man, I saw somebody... I, I saw... Okay, so somebody brought up that mammoth, the Siberian one, that was like kind of famous because it had the food in its mouth. Yeah. Um, somebody brought that up in a... In a uh, um, in a conversation online and like this, some of the stuff that people tried to skirt that with was hilarious which uh, I will definitely tell you guys about that after we take a break <laughs> what <laughs> way to keep them hanging bro yeah I'm learning this whole like uh, what is it called snaky? what's it called when you kind of you it, it's on? a tease yeah right? I'm gonna tell you guys about the skirt tards when we come back for the break that's not a very good tease actually <laughs> <laughs> snake tease <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to the Brothers of the Serpent podcast, where we have the only known non-head binding way of turning yourself into a long head with 30% brain in, uh, enlargement guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> long head. <laughs> Fucking long heads. <laughs> so, uh, light up the smokes. That's right. Let's to light go. The smokes with my special Tesla lighter. Hell yeah. <laughs> 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 Lighting the smokes with sparks. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was just I was talking about somebody scriptarding that mammoth. The, this is the one in that was found in Siberia on the still frozen into the tundra, and it was like it was on the side of a it was eroding out of a cliff on the side of a river, uh, and they found it like basically sitting back on its haunches, still had food in its mouth and in its stomach that was unputrified, and it was flowering plants. That it's that guy we've yeah, talked about yeah. on the show before. So I saw somebody mention that because this was in, a, of course, this was in a, um, these were comments on a, an article about climate change. And, and uh, somebody had brought up that mammoth as evidence of like pretty catastrophic climate change. Yeah. And somebody else was like, he could have just fallen into a crevasse. 
<laughs> a crevasse with like negative 200 degree temperatures I know. down there. I'm like, bro, he was eating flowering plants. So that requires a temperate climate. Which means that he's frozen in ice. Yeah. Which which requires cold. Crevasses are generally considered to be in glaciers. (laughs) (laughs) Flowering plants don't grow on glaciers. So, but a crevasse could be, you know, a stone crevasse. Right. But, but that, like, he was basically saying that he fell into a crevasse in the ice. That's what he was basically oh, saying. Okay. He, well, that's dumb. Everybody knows that it's he was dumb. No matter which way you look at it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't find a, a smart way to look at it. Right. Yes. To say. Okay. It was flowering <laughs> plants and everything was fine, and he fell into a crevasse of stone, <laughs> and then ice it came, <laughs> which is what we're talking about. Yeah. Catastrophic change. <laughs> fine, bro. He fell into a crevasse. <laughs> Three seconds later, everything froze. <laughs> Oh, I love how they changed the <clears throat> the wording from global warming to climate change. Yeah. It's like... First, it was anthropogenic. It was called anthropogenic, anthropogenic global, global warming, warming, which is, you know, man-made. And, and then they realized that, like, <clears throat> the people they're trying to trick didn't know what anthropogenic meant, so they just <laughs> took that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, global warming. And then after a while, when none of their predictions came true, they were like, okay, Let's just call it climate change because that's always happening. Right. And that way you can blame everything on it. Yeah. As but then anybody, to... anytime somebody tries to point out that it's doing something you don't like, you could say you can't use the weather to like, calculate climate change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like hot we have a hot, huge yeah. storm coming. It's the biggest storm ever to hit the coast of Texas ever in 47 years. <laughs> It symbolizes climate change. <laughs> well, yeah, it does. So does that rock over there. Uh, yeah. And the storm that hit the Texas coast 47 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So they, the, the climate's getting worse. This is the worst storm in 47 years. <laughs> okay. So the one 47 years ago was worse <laughs> yeah. than this one? Is that because that means yeah, like, but it's happening more frequently. So was was the climate more changed forty seven years ago? <laughs> it's happening more frequently now. More frequently, yeah, yeah. Since ten years ago, I have one. Seen, I, yeah, I have. Yeah, <laughs> the frequency's going up. Yeah, because we have one, one click every fifty years. Yeah, yeah. I've, but I've seen them saying stuff like that. That they're like, okay, it's not the temperature. It's not the amount. Because people will say like, dude, look at the medieval warm period, the little ice age, and they're like, it's not the amount that the temperature is going to go up. It's the rate of increase in the rise. And I'm like, so the Younger Dryas, you never heard of that? 18 degrees in less than a decade. Yeah. History is hard. (laughs) Yeah. It was slaves. Destroy it. Yeah. I actually just told him, I was like, it's really hard for me to tell if you people are lying through your teeth or you're just fucking morons. I I can't tell the difference. (laughs) Either you're like lying through your teeth because you know about something like the Little Dryas or you just you're just a fucking moron. You don't know. And because you can't tell the difference, they're either a really good liar or they're a really big moron. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> at least that's good. <laughs> yeah, you're good at something. Yeah. One thing. Or another. <laughs> you're either a really huge moron or a really huge liar. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just uh, some some skirptard comments are hilarious. You know, it fell into a crevasse. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like the ones you were talking about. From the kid that found that city. <laughs> yeah. It, like, this one's near me. It looks just like it. You're like, yeah. uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> no, I like, uh, like, okay, we want to find more mammoths to prove climate change happened. <laughs> so if we look at where that mammoth was found and see what constellation is above it, <laughs> and then we just look at all the rest of the stars... We should find Everywhere. a mammoth at every one. We should yeah. be able to find mammoths. Because, like, everyone. obviously, if you put stars there, I mean, there's so many fucking mammoths. <laughs> yeah. There's going to be a mammoth at every fucking star. That's right. There's <laughs> nothing special about that. That's right. Sweet. So we can use stars to find everything This is want. using the Copernican principle that, like, anywhere you look should be the same as any other place. And I've tried that. I'm like, I look at hot chicks, and then I look over here, and I don't see hot chicks. And I'm just like, this doesn't work. Copernican principle failed. <laughs> <laughs> When 
I see a hot chick, I look up at the sky and I'm like, what constellation is above that? <laughs> I need to find the other one. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's genius. <laughs> yeah, there's billions of stars up there. So, shit, this should be easy. Because obviously that works, That's no matter right. how you try it. That's right. It's like, it's like pyramids are just the easiest way to throw stones into a pile. Yeah, I was thinking about that the other day, too. <laughs> Like, that's just the way, that was the easiest way to make a tower. Yeah. The, a tall building was to make a... To stack them a up. Fucking a fucking massive stone <laughs> base that kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> because they obviously didn't know how to balance things. Yeah. I'm Except always... they carried those stones all the way to the top. <laughs> yeah. But they couldn't balance shit. Right. I'm always just like, no, bro, the, actually the easiest stone pile to make is this, just a stone pile. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See that, that pyramid that failed, the one that collapsed? Yeah. That's the that's easiest stone pile A stone pile. pile. <laughs> and In other words, they yeah. failed at making a pyramid, <laughs> and it became a pile. Because pyramids are actually really fucking hard yeah. to make. Yeah. And it becomes a pile of stones, which, guess what? We'll be there for a long time. So you're right in the sense that like, you can just make a pile of stones, and it'll last forever. But that's not what they were doing. Like, right. That's a pile of stones. That's a pyramid. Yeah. <laughs> beavers. That's the next one. <laughs> yeah. Beavers. Beaver. Like, I don't know if we've ever gone through this, but like <clears throat> mainstream archaeology and anthropology are isolationists. This is the theory that they that they conform to is called isolation theory, that that all cultures were isolated from each other, that the oceans were huge barriers. OK. Even though there were massive high keeled boats buried next to the pyramid. H high heeled boats? Keeled. Oh, right. Did I say I high like, heel? Wow, wow. No, I, you, you said you said heel. Stilettos. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking going out in my solar stiletto. <laughs> high keeled. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's also there's a, a there's like a this is kind of like catastrophists and 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 uniformitarianism. uniformitarianism. You have isolationists, and then on the other side you have diffusionists. Diffusion theory, basically, diffusion theory of archaeology and anthropology is basically that like that cultures are not isolated that the that the oceans are highways and that culture inf cultural information and stuff diffuses out from its centers into other other cultures. Ah. Okay. Whereas isolationism basically says that there is no contact especially when there's right. oceans in between and so this is why they have so many see there aren't any out of place artifacts in in diffusionism. There's no such thing. Right. Like if you find a Japanese style sculpture in South America Diffusionists just think, well, either Japan came here or there was trade or whatever. Right. Isolationists are like, that can't be there. Hide it in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> Which one seems more logical? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Give, so, yeah. So yeah. they have, <clears throat> they don't, but the mainstream is isolationists. Yes. And so they to have. To a man, yeah. That, that's one of the things that's bothered me, that there is a field called Egyptology. Right. As though studying those pyramids is, and everything that you learn from studying those pyramids is, is only local knowledge. Like you're only gaining knowledge of what happened there. Yeah. So they find all these pyramids in Mexico and they're like, oh yeah, those. those that's they, Mexicology. Yeah, that's Mexicology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there is no other ology like that named after. <clears throat> that, I think part of the reason for that is because Egyptology really kicked off archaeology in the West. Yeah. Well, like, I'm just talking about what you were talking about. But now it's because Egyptology is different from archaeology in the sense that it's it's politics. It's all politics in Egypt. I mean, like a lot of archaeology involves politics, especially when you start finding shit that, that people don't like. <clears throat> like when in China they find the red-haired, very, very ancient red-haired mummies that are really tall. They don't like that's po Politically, that's bad the for Caucasians. them. Caucasians. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Vikings or whoever they were. It's just the really tall, red-haired guys with braids. <clears throat> so in China, that's politically bad because they have their whole story. And that this land was like, you know, the, the Asians sprung up out of it like mushrooms or whatever the fuck. Yeah. And it's always been theirs. And so you can't have red-haired Caucasian mummies being there before any Asian people. Right. <clears throat> no, you know, so, so archaeology is always wrapped up in political stuff. Anywhere you go, there's going to be some political reason why uh, something is or is not going to be palatable by the people in the area. You know, like right. this is what happened with the giants here. 
like the regular, normal sort of common folk, the, the American people thought the whole lost race of giants was fucking badass. They loved it. But political elite didn't like it. Yeah. And they also, there was something going on with the natives that, but I, I've never figured that one out. Because, that came later. Yeah. It was like, it was more like the political elite used the natives to sort of erase the giants. Right. Uh, and then started accusing everybody of being racist. Like, you think that the natives couldn't build this shit or whatever. It's like, uh, no, that's not what we're saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, they the the head of the Smithsonian was one of them was a uh, like spent eight years living in an Indian uh, and on an Indian re- reservation, learning all their culture, which is great. That's fine. But he comes out of there and and becomes the head of the of uh, the Smithsonian, and he's the one that instituted the like digging up of all the mounds across the entire United States. And it was because he was he knew that there were that 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 there were Native Americans buried in them, but also down at the bottoms of a lot of them, they were finding these anomalous skeletons. So he went on this campaign to have every single one of them dug up by archaeologists or whatever, and so that they could kind of just sort of sweep that shit under the rug. Huh. I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, that that's what the, the, like the 12th report to the Bureau of Ethnology, whatever that, like they were just, they were just blanketing the entire country, going to every known mound and digging it all up. And it, this was like, this was, you know, they weren't, this was when archaeology was in its infancy. So they were destroying the mounds. Like if they were doing this now, they wouldn't be destroyed. They would dig, they would dig trenches and they would be very careful. And yeah, it would take so long and cost so much money that they just would not do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then they would be like, no, you can't dig in it. Right. Like we need to dig in it. Like the mounds well, in Moundsville. Okay, dig it up. No. No. We don't have the funding. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you the funding to the bottom of that mound. <laughs> That's what I always want to say. <laughs> but yeah, that so he he just basically went on a whitewashing campaign. And it was and so after that previous to that, when people when American or like the the, the colonists or whatever, the settlers, the farmers thought that these mounds were associated with some lost ancient race of giants, they treasured them. They, so the, in their fields or whatever, they would they would plow around them and they would keep them, you know, they keep them all badass. But as soon as like the Smithsonian kept saying, no, 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 these are just these are just burial mounds of the of the local Indian tribes. There's nothing special about them, whatever. Then the the farmers just destroyed them so that they could fucking plow there. Ugh. So that was a great move. But yeah, politics. So I, I've always thought Egyptology is called that because. Originally, it was Egyptology. There was no archaeology. But then the stuff they were doing in Egypt kind of merged from being tomb robbing, tomb, you know, grave robbing to a sort of systematic, like we're trying to figure out, understand what happened here. Yeah. Because it's really what it started out with was tomb robbing. I mean, basically, yeah. you know, but somebody was a highbrow tomb robber and he like went in there, <laughs> robbed a bunch of shit and he was like, hmm, <laughs> I don't think I'll sell this one yet. <laughs> 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 you know, and uh, and of course, when they asked the local people, they, nobody they had legends and shit, but nobody knew anything, and nobody could read any of the script on anything. Yeah, but, that's what I'm saying. Like they pyramids, they find them everywhere. Yeah, but because beavers. That's that's what I'm saying. <laughs> their, their their argument is so ridiculous. Like that that was just the easiest thing to do. Right, or the beaver explanation. Like, well, when humans. When humans come up against the same sort of challenges, they they respond. You know, their their solutions are the same. And I'm like, no, they're not. Yeah. No, they are fucking not. <laughs> Look at houses. They're all different. I mean, like architecture is like that. Like there are some things that are common. Like you have to have, you know, to build a doorway, you have to have the two uprights and a lintel. Or you could just be like the the the, the Maltons and just cut a fucking hole through the whole entire yeah. rock. <laughs> it doesn't take an entire field of science to study one animal because they do all the same stuff. Yeah. Like a single species, they act pretty much the same everywhere. Okay, yeah. Like so you can study a single like lemur and kind of know Right. There's not a whole field of lemurists right. that just study the one animal. Yeah. They study all these different types of animals in the same Right. Sort they're of, they're mammalian biologists. Sort right. Of, yeah. Exactly. But when it comes to humans, you have to study like each individual culture. Yeah. 
everywhere because they all do everything differently. Right. But that. But yeah. then but we then find also, yeah. we find these crazy like incredibly scientifically advanced systems that are the same. Yeah. And then their excuse is, oh, well, we just do the same thing. When we come <laughs> right. Well, then how come there's so many of you? <laughs> yeah, wh- Why isn't there just one guy? Because if we all do it the same, you should be able to look at that place in Mexico and understand every site in the world. <laughs> it's yeah, it's not the same. But it's the same thing with it. I mean, like the, the the I don't know. To me, it's this is typical, like the isolationist, just like the the uniformitarian geological theory. I mean, it's, it's like it fucking doesn't work. Yeah. And evidence is, it isn't just like here and there, out of place artifacts. It's fucking everywhere yeah. that massively catastrophic shit on a global scale is taking place multiple times on this planet. And they admit it in geological history saying, Permian, you know, extinction event, right. extinction event. So it, so this is the same thing with isolationists. It has been completely falsified in so many ways, in so, so many times across the past 200 years, and they still fucking cling to and they will like they will sneer at you if you're a diffusionist they're just like oh my god like yeah dude uh your idea has been falsified over and over and over and over and over and over and over in every possible way so to me like something is making because i I can't say that you can't obviously you can't point at all archaeologists and say they're all fucking idiots right Yeah, yeah uh and you can't point at them and say like they're, uh, they're if they're not idiots they're too afraid to you know to to like to to go against the grain because that's not you can't say that either surely there's some so like why are they are why is this isolationist thing still around it's it's like something else is causing it to stay there you know what I mean it has support from outside the archaeological community that is non scientific in in source. <clears throat> Well, yeah, but there's also, when you get into the field, you have to go through the certification, yeah, right, that is set up by the quote-unquote top people, yeah. whatever. They set the standards. Yeah. And whoever those people are throughout time are setting the standards, which are then taught. Yeah. And then... But you can and then pl- you have peer review and all of that by the same people. Yeah, but and you so- could you could play the game. You could play the like you know I think Nick said this to me one time like when you go to college or whatever you play the game to get your degree, like whatever they whatever you know that you need to do to get the degree you do. Right, so you have to you have to write a huge paper that's proving something that you don't think is totally is true, but you know that if you don't do that, this professor isn't going to give you a good grade. You just fucking write it because what you're trying to do is get the degree. That's the point. Right. But if you're aware that you're just doing this to get the degree and this is actually bullshit or you think there's a lot of evidence against it, then once you've got the degree and then you have some sort of maybe you get tenure somewhere or maybe you get a huge grant or whatever, then you go and get irrefutable or extremely powerful evidence for your idea and then you put it out there. And Which is what Robert Schock did. And he's hated. Yeah. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Like the, the establishment... In, and I'm not saying this as an answer, like, oh, well, it's just simply because blah, blah. No, I think we're pointing at the same idea, because my idea is that the, 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 the outside force is government money. Yeah, that's true. Who runs the universities? Government money. They're all funded by government. And the universities are where you find the top guys that are, like, f- telling you whether you're going to get your PhD or whether this, the, you know, that, that, that's where the peer review pool comes from. Yeah. The people that run the journals, you know, the, all the professors. And not only that, but then then you have the the grant money for right grant money for yeah for projects, and it's all it's 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 either and that and and government is the hub of political shit. So. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so but but what's interesting about because like it doesn't stop there. What's interesting about this is like why is there a government agenda to keep isolationism in in vogue and 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 uniformitarianism. Like that's what's interesting to me about it, because like you, so once we've identified, okay, so probably the the impetus to keep isolationism as an idea afloat and uniformitarianism afloat is coming from the grant from government grant money. So why is the government wanting to keep those ideas afloat? Uh, 
I have. Uh, I'll tell you, it's the Illuminati and the Bill Burgers. <laughs> I have a lot of ideas about that, but I don't know if I want to go into it. <laughs> There's a lot of power in separation. I'll just say that. Yeah. Like. There's an axiom, right? A house divided cannot stand. Right. Uh, divided conquer. Yep. So the government or any government is a, a an entity that's, yeah. that is seeking to have power yeah. over people. So the easiest way to do that is to not have them united. It just seems strange. Like, I mean, I mean, yes, I completely agree. So, well, I'm going to this idea of, of diffusionism yeah. versus isolationism. As long as you keep even like the idea of our history in terms of like everyone is, was isolated. All these cultures were isolated. There was no past time when things were better than they are now. Yeah, this is the best that it gets. That's what I think the ultimate goal is. This is, to, is the best it's ever been and you're we destroying are the, it. We are the pinnacle. Yeah. All of you out there are destroying it and you need our help to make sure it doesn't get destroyed. Right. So you keep them divided. Yeah. Yeah. To me, that's, that's what as it, far as I'm going to go. That's, with yeah. Most of it part. seems to come down to like the, the linear thing. They want the general idea that this is the most advanced civilization that's ever existed on this planet. Right. That's what they want. And because why? Because it helps them. It helps keep the power. Because it's it's another form of division. Well, if you thought that that, like, think of it, like, just just try to step away from politics and all that bullshit, and like, let's just let's just do a thought experiment. Let's say that that tomorrow somebody comes up with like irrefutable, like completely concrete evidence that everyone accepts that there was an extremely advanced civilization 30,000 years ago. What would change? Suddenly we would say, so what, all these problems we have, like how did they handle them? What, what did they do? Yeah, exactly. And we would be looking to the past instead of the government for the for solutions. The That's right. And the past is uh, tangible. It's something that's really there. It's not yeah. the fu the future is this thing like oh, but just pay us this money every yeah. month. Like and here's this possible utopic okay yeah. for you. Here's this possible utopic future in but, sixty years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The timelines are always beyond your ability to really, you know, get there and see if it's true. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's a decade. But, but then after the decades passed, it's 20 years later. Yeah, yeah or that. 30 or 40, yeah. It's, they're always shifting the goalposts. Yeah, you know, in, 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 uh, in Gods of Eden, William Brambley was talking about that too, that there's always the apocalypse. Like if you look throughout history, the known history, written history or whatever, all like for the yeah. past 6,000 years, at every single generation in every age, everyone believed that the end of the world was just around the corner, like all throughout history. And that's because it's been it's been sort of a major part of most religions that it's about to happen. The end of the fucking world. Yeah. And he says that that and and that, and that like just like so just before the end of the world, there's going to be this gigantic war. Right. This huge battle between good. The forces of good and the forces of evil. And then after and that, we're on the good side. By right. The way. Yeah. Who, yeah. Everyone's on the good side. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's also on the bad side. <laughs> But yeah, so whatever perspective you're from, you're the good side and everyone else is the bad guys or whatever. But the, but there's there's going to be this humongous war and then your side, will, your good side will triumph against all the other good sides. And then <laughs> and then there will be this utopic period after that. And it's the same in almost like every world's religion is like that. It has this sort of same story that there's going to be, you know a return to God comes back something like this, this, the ultimate evil and then the ultimate good. And then there's this huge war and then there's paradise, paradise. And it's like our government's doing the same thing and just in a different way. Yeah. That like right now everything's fucked. We got to have this gigantic fucking massive upheaval and then we'll have paradise. We just got to kill all the bad, dude, bad, bad people first. Yeah. So, that's a good reason, like, and but there's also a saying, like, you know, he who controls the past controls the present, and he who controls the present controls the future. So. Yeah. Except comments. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah. those never hit us, except for 
on average, once every million years. <laughs> and it's like clockwork, bam, million years. Well, when did the last one hit us? 230 million years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think there might have been something recent that had... That's no! Not, sounds like we're kind of overdue for... No! <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not going to be destroyed by a comet. We're going to be destroyed by your mundane activity by every day. Cal farts, because you want that sandwich. Yeah, using too much energy. That's right. Yeah, what, it comes down to energy. I, like, I love the fact that they're like, so progress is like windmills. And I'm like, windmills have been around for 2,000 years, <laughs> at least. <laughs> yeah. No, if, if progress is like solar. I'm like, yeah, so the sun... That's been around for forever. <laughs> That's like the very first power source that humans ever had. You go outside and hold a steak up to the sun, see if you can cook it. It doesn't work. Fire is more advanced than solar power. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not progress. <laughs> yeah. What did what did uh, was a, so I, I'm uh, wait I want to go back to this this. <laughs> On this subject, I was about to say something about retreating, like you're you're not retreating, you're advancing to the rear. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pyramids, yeah, being the easiest things to build, right, out of solid stuff. That's stone. why they're they're everywhere. Right. I mean, like you know, everybody builds pyramids. Right. They're they're all over the world. Yeah. Everyone did. Uh, yeah. Well, why? I'm being facetious. Like I know houses everywhere are pyramids because they're so easy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Actually, we've only made one, the Luxor. And it's not solid stone. No, and it costs millions and millions and billions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, yeah. solid, st solid stone pyramids are the easiest thing to build out of stone. Yeah. If you're going to build, if you want to build a real high pile of stone. Yeah. So. And they're really easy to build if you use huge blocks, too. Yeah, let's, yeah. like, all right. All right, I'll, I'll let you go. Sorry. I'm no, you. you're, you're, <laughs> you're nailing it. Like, <laughs> let's build one. <laughs> yeah. I just want to see him build one. I gotta, I gotta finish like, learning how to build a new one out of solid stone somewhere. Yeah, I just gotta finish learning how to play <clears> that <throat> recorder, and then I'll be able to float the stones. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just so easy to say that, and yet, how long has Egyptology been around, and they haven't built one? Yeah, they haven't built one. Hundreds of years. I mean, the Englishmen were going over there. The, the Brits were going over there and grave robbing three hundred years ago. Yeah, and it slowly turned into archaeology, but. I don't know. It's like I was talking to somebody today about the um, the problem of like where they where they open up a tomb, and all indications are that it's been sealed since it was sealed. In other words, it's unbreached. No one's right. gone in there, and they find all this treasure, and then they tell you that there's no fucking corpse. There's no body on the the main. I mean, there might be bodies lining the walls of, like, the wives or the soldiers or the slaves or yeah. whatever. And then there's this huge sarcophagus. And it's empty. And it's empty. <laughs> oh, this tomb was robbed. Right. This tomb was... <laughs> the grave robbers got the... <laughs> yeah, so they took... And I'm like, what? what? The, the looters left the loot and took the fucking corpse? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, that goes back to the giants. Like, that's... That's what we think. Or we... we um, had the idea that... Someone or some group or whatever uh, has taken all of those. That's right. Corpses. So when you read, Why? yeah, when you read a lot of the news stories, and 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 like people, a lot of people immediately go to like, okay, those are hoaxes, right? In other words, that there's this common trope of like newspaper hoaxes. So everybody, like, if you listen to the script, yeah. But then when you say fake news, they're like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You just, you can't get anything right, <laughs> right. <laughs> around here. But they're also basically claiming that there was a lot of newspaper hoaxing in the 1800s up to the 1900s, and all of it was on giants. Right. Every fucking newspaper hoax was some archaeological bullshit. Right. And there were thousands of them. It's just ridiculous. But anyway, so I'm sure some of them were hoaxes. But you can tell when you read the hoax stories, they're actually hilarious. You know, the thing is, the skirt tars don't have a sense of humor, so they can't tell the difference between the funny ones and the not funny ones. So they think they're all hoaxes. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't think any of them are funny. Right. They don't they can't tell the difference. I'm like, well, look, bro, this one's hilarious. Look at the way he spells it. Look at the what the people's names are, you know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, 
in a lot of these newspaper stories, they'll tell you about how the, 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 the giant bones were discovered. Somebody was digging a cellar or they were, they're not all in mounds. Like somebody was digging a cellar. They were, they were expanding some, some city project, you know, they were digging sewers or they were whatever. And sometimes digging in mounds, but they, they find these bones and they're immense. Sometimes they say that they crumbled almost as soon as they were exposed to the air. Mm-hmm. They just turned into dust. And I've I've actually had scriptures be like that's bullshit like that doesn't happen I'm like, uh, but in that book yes, uh, Forbidden Archaeology that happened time and time again like right. when they were when, when they're, they're not trying, fossilized when they're trying to discover the missing link like a lot of these fossils that they they were like oh my god like this is yeah this is something serious and just and then it dust. just like they they take it and it's like real fragile and they put it in some case or whatever and then later when they come to look at it it's just a pile of shit right. And that's when they don't fossilize. Usually, it's like with, like so, like a lot of the mounds. So it's okay as long as it's happening to missing links. But when, <laughs> when it's a giant, it's like, Pfft. right? No, the giant bones don't disintegrate. Everyone knows. Yeah, but like you know, if you what that's also interesting as an aside. Like if you look at a lot of the myths, the giants always had bones of stone. Oh yeah. Presumably, because ancient peoples found fossilized bones oh, of giants. Oh shit, that's cool. Right. That is cool. Um, now, of course, they'll say, like, those were dinosaur bones. Like, what would you say? Like, they were mammoth bones? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was. <laughs> <laughs> they were fucking mammoths. Back to the mammoths. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got to take a break. Oh, yeah. Last break. Last break. Final break. Snakes next. Snakes next. the final segment of Brothers of the Serpent podcast. Two snake bros. High atop the Edwards Plateau, the bottom of an ancient seabed, standing on eons of bones. Smoking snake smokes. Smoking snake smokes. (laughs) Smokes, let's go. (laughs) (laughs) Talking about giant triangles made of stone. Giant governments made of idiots. Giant giants made of bone. <laughs> but giants bones of giants. <laughs> All the same usual stuff. Yeah. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna after this episode, we're gonna overlay the stars over all the governments in the world and see <laughs> if they line up. <laughs> they should. It's, stars stars are everywhere. They'll line up with everything. Yeah, fucking governments are everywhere too. <laughs> Yeah, I trust the government about as far as I can throw it. Now, we have a really big government. And I can't throw governments. Yeah, especially <laughs> not this one. It's really big. <clears throat> but uh, so, we, yeah, we're talking about the Smithsonian and we're talking about the giants, uh, the giants of ancient, uh, of ancient America and the fact that like thousands of them were reported found. But there's there's not a lot of actual physical evidence left except for these stories that were printed or so in town records or whatever you can find in the old newspaper stories but there's other things too like a lot of the newspaper stories will say that the bones were put on display at the local men's club or at the at the church or outside of the sheriff's you know office or whatever and then yeah. many people came to see them uh but a large number of these stories also say something about men from the smithsonian who came to retrieve the the artifacts right but what I started, I don't know if this is really, if this is in the, if this is out there in the, in the internet or whatever, but like I started to notice when I'm reading, cause I've read hundreds of these, not thousands, but I've read hundreds of these newspaper stories. Cause like I, I used to follow Jim Vieira and he would put clippings up every day Yeah, and I'd read them. And, uh, what was it called? The, the giant something. I don't remember. What, I remember that oh, feed you had. Like, yeah. You I can't remember. Did. Giant update. Yeah. <laughs> Giant update. <laughs> Giant update. <laughs> but uh, I noticed that the the Smith the quote unquote Smithsonian people that would show up to, had a very men in black quality to them in the sense that they would show up way too fast. So, so if you're if it's eighteen fifty and somebody has discovered 
uh, and they're out in like they're out in fucking the Midwest somewhere. The Smithsonian's on the East Coast. They're out in the Midwest in the middle of nowhere, and they've just got, and then somebody shows up the next day from the Smithsonian to retreat. And I'm just like, what? Uh, what? Yeah, and number one, how, like, how did word travel that fast? Right, and then they got they jumped on a horse, and you know, like or they got on a train. I don't. I mean, like, I just it was too weird. Uh, but I also I saw I started to think like, well, this was a, you know, maybe I mean it was a a different time. Like you could probably throw on a black suit, claim to be from the Smithsonian, Smithsonian, and people would just believe you. I guess if you had maybe if you had some kind of. I mean, would they ask to see your ID? That's kind of a very recent thing, you know? Like, let me see your badge. Yeah. You know? Like, you could basically, if you had a little freaking star, you that you were the sheriff, you could shoot people, you know? Like, <laughs> there, was an, there wasn't this complicated I- identification thing happening. So, I'm not sure that we can blame, that we should blame the Smithsonian for the missing artifacts, at least not all of all them. All of them, yeah. I think that, because there is like, and I know the Men in Black thing is, it's kind of a joke because of the, I mean, the movies were great, you know, the Will Smith and uh, to, uh, Tommy Lee Jones or whatever. But like, that's, it's a real phenomenon. The movies were, it's kind of a, kind of a, a very clever comedy, but it's based on a, a true phenomenon and they are very strange. I mean, they are incredibly weird. Like the men in black encounters are, are. They're just vastly strange. They're some of the strangest things you'll ever read. Like, they don't make any sense. They, they're not government agents either. Like, like they seem to want to come off as government agents. They're always dressed in this impeccable black suit, but there's something wrong with their skin. They don't have any hair. You know, like not even eyebrows or anything. Like they're just completely bald or whatever. Uh, they're very they're they're pale and thin. They talk strangely, like they put in, they put in the emphasis on the wrong parts of words. Sometimes they just—it's very weird the way they—and then they'll they will intimidate people for no reason, like or they'll and they'll know, like in the intimidation will be like they know things that you're like, wait, how did this guy, this this guy is claiming from the air force who just knocked on my door? Like I just saw a UFO like two hours ago, right? I just see a UFO and then I get a knock on the door and I'm out in the middle of nowhere. I open the door and there's two guys wearing dark suits there and they claim to be from the department of energy or the air force or whatever. And they asked to come in. Then they start asking me all these very strange questions about what I saw. I'm like, I haven't even told anybody that I saw this yet. Huh? How are these guys, you know, that's what they're like. And they use the flashy thingy on you. Well, and then you don't remember it. <laughs> no. <laughs> <clears throat> Did you flashy thing me? <laughs> Kay. Kay. You ever flashy thing me? <laughs> 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 Last suit you'll ever wear. No. <laughs> Again. For the. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like. And so, like, also, they'll, you know, they'll just do a lot of paranormal shit. Like, they will show up. Um, They'll be they'll be knocking at the door and then and then. You're like, okay, you let him in, you talk to him, you're like, this is weird. The whole time it's very strange. And then they warn you never to tell anybody. And you're like, I haven't told anybody, you know? And then you let him out. And then you shut the door and you're sitting there like, that was fucking weird. And then you're like, wait, what did they come here in? You know, you're like way down, you're miles and miles down a farm road. At the, you <laughs> open the door and like, they're, they're gone, but there was no vehicle. You didn't hear a vehicle. And you didn't hear a vehicle pull up. You restart, you remember. Did you hear a vehicle pull? They just appeared on your doorstep and knocked on the door, and you hadn't even told anybody you'd seen a UFO. I mean, there it's the the men in black encounters are fucking strange. They're just incredibly odd, um, and they happen with artifacts. They happen with they happen with archaeological stuff too. It's just not. It's just more well known with the UFO stuff because it's kind of a. <clears throat> it's kind of a. Uh, I guess it's a, it's, it's a legend that goes along with the UFO like stuff. The ufology yeah. sort of. People sort of like conflate those two, but the men in black show up for any, they can, they can show up for any strange experience you have. Like anything. If you, if you find a cave that has ancient paintings in it of something weird or whatever, and you come out and there's like a men in black standing at your fucking house waiting for you to come out of the cave, you know, like that's happened to people. Um, you can tell sometimes that, like, the story of the Men in Black encounter doesn't get told, but you can tell it's in there because of what the person does. 
because the, the men in black seem to like intimidate, you know, the person will just like, they'll be totally enthusiastic. They'll be like, man, this is badass, blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden they just, they don't want to have nothing to do with it. They don't want to talk to anybody anymore. And then they fucking move, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I've been wondering if there's something like that going on with these giant stories, because it, that's what it looks like to me. These dudes in suits show up claiming to be from some government institution. Right, and then they hand over all the right. bones and everything. That's right. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to take these over for analysis. And yeah, then, we're going to get this figured out. We'll and then the know. reporter is like, a couple of weeks later, they're like, well, we reached out to the Smithsonian to see like what the deal was, and they were like, what bones? Yeah, like, we, and we it's to, to this day, the Smithsonian claims to not have any giant bones in any of its archives. Now, which is false, because people have gone through the, the card files of the archives and actually found archived cards that that list like you know jo- extremely large jawbone or whatever there's at least two or three in there but um they should have thousands of of full skeletons mummies uh stone plaques with strange hieroglyphs fucking gl- uh, glimmering swords made out of unknown metal i mean like they should have all kinds of shit in there and they they're like we don't have any anything like that no skeletons over six foot two and they're like that's bullshit yeah that could also be a phenomenon of Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> what, the Smithsonian's putting out fake news? No, it's like not necessarily news hoax or newspaper hoax, but that reporters, not all reporters, but many of them just do a fucking shit poor job. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They show up on site and they find one person and they ask some questions and they get some answers and then they fill out the rest of the story. Yeah. <laughs> They look around. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how they do it, but it's pretty obvious they, many of them can do a pretty bad job. Yeah. What's, what's interesting in this case, though, is the, is the communication problem. The fact that you have thousands of newspaper articles and they have so many of the same things in them. Yeah, exactly. And it's, and like these days you'd be like, yeah, so cause, cause he just Googled like, you know, fake giant bone right, stories. When you have some little small town on in, on the East Coast somewhere in 1890. Yeah, and then and then some place in like the central United States. Yeah, and it has the exact. And they're very like close together. Some of them are far apart, but it's like how how would they even know? Right. You how know, this uh, one happened like 80 years later, and it's almost exactly like that one. Right, and it's like it's the the. the like a, yeah, the and the only way to find that before was like microfilm. If you even if we were right, you'd have, you have to travel to small towns all over the United States, hoping to come across a town library that had that had access to all the old newspaper articles in a way that you could act because microfilm was like yeah, people were still having to still more recent too yeah, so you had to be like shuffling through giant boxes of dusty newspaper articles or whatever, and yeah. and then like there's oh just, so there's this just is how too I, many of them. There's too many yeah with too many of the same things right. It's just so it it doesn't seem to be a hoax, but uh, uh, these Smithsonian people that show up to take the artifacts are one of the similarities. And a lot of times there just doesn't seem to be enough time for them to have gotten there. Like, I I wish I knew, like, what would happen today if you found something very strange in your yard and you called up the Smithsonian? How do you you even get a hold of the Smithsonian? The Smithsonian. Yeah. Hey, Smithsonian. (laughs) <laughs> I found like this this bronze knife in my fucking backyard, and they're like, "Okay, we'll be there tomorrow." Yeah, like, <clears throat> do they even do that? <laughs> no, I don't I mean, know. We should try. Yeah, <laughs> we should snake them, dude. Yeah, it needs to be something too big to mail. It's like too big to you know, too big to mail. <laughs> <laughs> too big to mail. <laughs> 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 They'll only come get it if it's too big to mail. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you bail me out here? This yeah. thing's too big to mail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I found a huge titanium pyramid. <laughs> it's too big to mail. Come get it. <laughs> it was really easy to build. The easiest <laughs> titanium bu- building ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um... So yeah, that my one of my ideas on the the why we don't have uh, so, but this makes it harder to understand why there's a cover up, because obviously there's a cover up. But if there's if it's a, if the men in black are involved and they're half paranormal, I mean they, they they do things that they do things that make you think that they are not temporally uh, linear like we are. 
you know, like there are, dude, there are stories of them, like they, they, if they're driving in a vehicle, they always have like, they always have like this, like a, a black town car, like a Buick or something or whatever, but it's a model that doesn't exist. Okay. And it's impeccably shiny. Like it's like, it looks like it just came off the showroom floor. Even if you're way out on a dusty road, right? The car's all pulls up and it's just like fucking gleaming and there's no dust on it. Yeah. And then when they get into to leave, it leaves and goes backwards. Like in other words, it just reverse. Like you just hit reverse on the, on the you know on the video of it. Like like they pull up and they and they pull in like that, and then when they leave, it just pulls out backwards and drives away like that. <laughs> yeah. So it's like there there's something about them that's not. They've only studied our culture a little bit, <laughs> just enough. <laughs> they know that they need to arrive in this thing and yeah. leave in this thing. Yeah. Yeah, and they'll both get out of the back seats, and there's no one in the front. <laughs> but yeah, so it's, I'm just all I'm saying is the Men in Black are not government agents; they're not some secret organization with strange technology. They're fucking something else. They're they're paranormal. They're they're. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to describe. You have you have to read a bunch of the stories to start to get to. Uh, they have they're definitely high strangeness. You know, they're the kind of thing that happens when... How long has that idea been, like, going on? What, the Men in like, Black thing? Yeah, yeah. Because, like, I never heard of it, you know, before the movies. Well, it's been going on... The, the modern iteration of the Men in Black phenomenon has been going on since the beginning of the flying saucer phenomenon in the United States, which okay. is right after the end of the World War II, okay? But now that we have this modern iteration of the Men in Black, you can look throughout history and see them appearing... Uh, in in earlier times like in in medieval periods they would show up but they were they were wearing black robes they uh, looked like a priest or whatever yeah so it looked like the authority figure yeah the, the guy from the, the government yeah. yeah yeah show up in a chariot yeah <laughs> get into the chariot and it goes backwards <laughs> the <chariot> goes, <laughs> they always have these perfect black chariots <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the horses would have red eyes or whatever, and there would and it's a horse that kind of horse that doesn't exist. Yeah, so they show up like full Roman, full Roman fucking regalia, <laughs> fucking giant plume on their hat, <laughs> <laughs> fucking men in plumes, <laughs> the men in robes, and they just mirror 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 thing you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the men, but the yeah the men in black seem to show up with the giants, and that you know so some people think that if that's happening. They've suggested that that connects the giants to aliens because they associate the men in black with aliens. Yeah. Well, we had talked about the idea that the the giants were the Nephas. Right. Uh, the Nef Anun Anun Nephas Anunnaki. being <laughs> the Anunnaki. Or the offsprings of the offsprings yeah, of. Yeah. Or something like that. And there's this weird thing where they, they'll find these quote unquote tombs that have sarcophagi that are just empty but it's full of all the you know the the riches are still there the gold and all these artifacts everything's still there except there's this massive sarcophagus that's empty yeah and so why would either either the group that discovered it is like uh you know that's we're not going to publish that yeah that's what I, I thought there's two possibilities one is that Whoever is making the discovery will will not, cannot, whatever, discuss the contents of the big sarcophagus, so they just claim that there's nothing in it. Right. Or... They've been removed. They've been removed, yeah, systematically. Yeah. Once we started doing archaeology a couple hundred years ago, something was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. We got to go get about two or 300,000 bodies off that planet. But that's another thing. Like, why, why do... If that's true, why do they not want us to know... Well, who's they? Whoever's removing them. Well, if it's the, if if whoever, whoever is removing them, them is whoever they are, whoever the bodies are, yeah. they're not human. But it seems to be tied to the same idea as as <clears throat> the divide and conquer. Like keep the you know the uniformitarianism and uh, the fucking longheads. Yeah, exactly. The, the uniformitarianism <laughs> and and uh, isolationism. Yeah, that whole idea, which is what we were just talking about, sort of. Disseminated by government. government. Yeah. This is so then it. you have like these tombs that seem to have other species of heads. Yeah. <laughs> heads <laughs> uh, that are not human or at least not our makeup. Yeah. 
And we don't need to know about that because that changes everything. Right. And makes all of our current squabblings meaningless. Right. By the way, I, I, this has bothered me ever since we did this episode on the longheads. Like, I found out what the parietal plate is. Like, you asked me, I was like, yeah, hey, yeah. yeah. The human skulls have three skull plates. You have the one on your forehead, and then there's two parietal plates in the back. And that makes you have a central suture going down the middle of your skull in the back where the parietal plates fuse together. Yeah. Most of the most of the quote unquote authentic like non head binding created like actual natural long heads have a single parietal plate. There is no central suture. <clears throat> yeah. So that makes them. I mean, whatever else you might think about them, they are definitely not Homo sapiens. Sape. They like. Right. Because you can tell that it isn't a. It's not a mutation. It's not a malformation. Their head is made that way. I was looking at some of them earlier this week, and I was just like, holy crap. Like they look, the skulls look badass. They don't look deformed. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, what that. When you asked me, you're like, "Well, what's the pride?" I was like, "I, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure. I knew it had something to do with the back of the skull, but I didn't fucking know exactly." If it, so yeah, that's what it is. <clears throat> so, and we've discussed what's her name, the the woman who was from the World Bank. Yeah. Who basically said that some of these, uh, some of these committees or meetings or whatever between like extremely high po- how p- powerful people in the UN and the worth of world bank or whatever like the, some of these meetings are being run by some dude with a long head that looks like Akhenaten. Yeah. So I mean that's this is all anecdotes and flimsy evidence but I'm just like it's the fucking long heads. <laughs> <laughs> the long heads don't that's want us to saying. find long Bring, heads. Bringing it full circle like you have you have these these ideas that are being like held on to desperately in the face of all of this evidence that points to something else. Right. That there was, there was an advanced civilization far older than what, uh, archeology span or the mainstream archeology span story is wanting to accept. And, yeah. the, and anything like there's just shitloads of that evidence. And the more it comes and the more people that are actually getting into that idea, do research and publish books. They're just like, ah, yeah. They get more and more vicious about how right. that's just all bullshit, and they start attacking their credentials. They attack everything, like yeah. we had discussed before. And so it's driving that area of, of science to be so ridiculously precise and careful yeah. with the way they present their evidence. <laughs> yeah. And the other side is like... They're still getting their asses kicked, but they're still holding on to it no matter. And they just ignore all of these other arguments. Right. Because they know that the vast majority of of the population that isn't into this fringe stuff accepts them as the authority. Exactly. And so following our logic earlier, leading to government, why would government do this? And then going back to this whole thing of like these authority figures showing up at all these strange findings or whatever and just oh yeah we'll take that and we'll go analyze it and then it vanishes yeah so many strange ideas men disappear. in black and it's like okay so if it is something else that's trying to remove itself from our history the question would be why and the, the answer or one possible answer. one possible answer is that they're well if they were trying to remove it it lines up perfectly with whatever the governments are doing yeah. and the establishment. And then you have this lady and everything. It's just like, I don't know. I think it that like, one, one idea is like they're, if they're trying to remove themselves from our history because they've always done that. Okay. This is the, this is what I think. They've always been removing themselves from our history by not writing themselves into the history. But now we're doing a different kind of history looking where we're going and find look, digging things up. That's a completely new thing. That's a totally new thing. Right. Like histories used to be basically what was written down from the people who were there. So it was easy to remove themselves from our history by just making sure that they weren't in those written accounts. Okay. But now we're going back and digging things up and like trying to sort of rebuild because now we've decided that all that written shit is bullshit. Right. It's all crap because we when we when everybody dropped religion, they've all decided that all ancient texts are suspect. Right. And. And pre-scientific people, even if they were trying to be accurate, were pre-scientific, and so they're dumb. So, like, 
you know, their butt flaps aren't advanced enough for us to trust trust their history. So now we're digging up, <laughs> now we're digging everything up and trying to reconstruct it ourselves. This is a brand new thing, and so they're yeah, having to it, remove themselves again. Right. Okay. But even the even the the group that's digging everything up and trying to rewrite it is trying to ignore all of the text that yeah. include the yeah. beings or the other people. <laughs> yeah. Right. The texts are saying like, yeah, so these other people came in. They're like, oh, yeah, that's myth. Right. So let's write it. Let's try to recreate the story from what we're finding here. Yeah. And it's like, well, we found this long head. Uh, get rid of that. Yeah. <laughs> Put that over there. Somebody will take it. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, it's a confusing bunch of shit. Yeah, like, like, the, uh, like wh- who is? What are you gonna do with seven thousand longhead skeletons yeah. that disappeared from Malta? I mean, like, does everybody on Malta have a longhead hanging in their fucking closet or something? <laughs> I think the longheads took them. You know, yeah. or they, I guess it's possible that they have them stored somewhere in a big underground thing in Malta, in a longhead container. Yeah. yeah. A long head container. <laughs> it's very long. We need a very long, long head container. Oh, a long head container? Yes, a, a very long one. But yeah, they're for long head. Yeah, but it needs to be long. <laughs> Seven oh, th- shit, they just discovered some other being, one of us. Don't worry, it crumbled to dust. <laughs> <laughs> They'll all think it's bullshit. <laughs> That's right. I hit it with the dust beam. <laughs> It does mean. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, it's all a big conspiracy. And have you heard that thing about people that con- people who believe in conspiracies ha- are weak minded because they are afraid to look at the world as chaos? That sounds like a conspiracy, right? I there. know. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, wow, that's what a convenient explanation for somebody who doesn't want there to be conspiracies ever when all of history is about all conspiracies. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty serious conspiracy they have. Yeah. Everyone well, who believes in conspiracies must have small brains. Yeah. That's Well, I was telling mom the other day, I was like, the like the best thing to do if you are a, a conspiracist, that like not a conspiracy theorist, but actually a person who is conspiring, right? So you're a person in power and you're always conspiring to do fucked up shit, is to like put out the idea that like conspiracy is bullshit, man. Like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Like, come on. People who believe in conspiracy theories are always like, their picture, there's a meme of them. You know, they're like, they get the huge Coke bottle glasses. They're just like, uh, well, I, uh, I believe that if you connect this to this over here, you know, and they're just like, <laughs> they're all fucking nerds that live in their mom's basement. I can hear all the scurptards right now just going, <laughs> oh my God, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they are an unwitting part of the conspiracy. <laughs> Yeah, every conspiracy needs minions. <laughs> Skirptards are minions of the conspiracy. It's like so much more likely that this all just happened by chance. And they're like, no, it isn't. <laughs> you, that's not true. <laughs> oh, man, I was I was reading through some stuff the other day where people talk, like where people try to say like, so you show them a series of, of things that are like that are similar in some coincidental way, right? And you're like, so, so maybe since I have this whole string of them, let's look at the idea that these aren't, this is not a coincidence. And where does that lead us? Right. And then, and then like this guy gets all pissed about that, shows up and posts a whole bunch more things that you didn't even see that also are part of the, the string of coincidences. He's like, that proves that it's totally coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, wait, so you just showed up and added a bunch more things to the list and said, now we know it's totally coincidental. That's just, I don't understand how people think can think that way. I just don't get it. It's like you're, if you're adding more to it, it becomes less likely right. that it's just by chance. Yeah. I'm thinking of the the whole idea of coincidence is, is it's really arbitrary whether you I mean, yeah absolutely it's like likely or unlikely like it just that just depends on your worldview exactly like how likely is it that right outside right now somebody's going to be doing a rain dance not very likely if you're a, like a person in a western civilization but if you were you know somebody in a native american one it was probably pretty fucking likely <laughs> so it depends on your perspective 
So is it like, is how likely is it that anything will happen? Well, no one can say that. Absolutely. You know, that's why, that's why I, w- I would always say something like, you know, well, we've been doing science for what, 400 years? That's how long we've been doing systematic data collection. The universe is, according to science, probably thir- 13 or 14 billion years old. How likely is it that we know what's likely? <laughs> <laughs> it's extremely <laughs> unlikely. <laughs> That's fucking brilliant. I love that. <laughs> That's badass. Yeah, so we, we've we been doing this for 400 years, and there's all these things that connect, and they're like, oh, those are coincidence. <laughs> yeah. And these other things that connect, they're like, no, these, this is legit. You're right. Well, well what, what, how do you tell the difference? And it's just like they just know. Yeah. You have to be science. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's especially when it's universal stuff. You're just like, dude, like not only is this the universe like 14 billion years old and we've only been doing this for 400 years, but we've only been doing it on this one planet in yeah. the entire fucking universe. Right. So it's just it's not just incredibly unlikely that we know what's likely. It's impossible that we can determine what is or is not likely to happen. Yeah. That's why I love your your uh, manual for the universe final edition. <laughs> yeah. like, that's uh, that's great <laughs> final edition. You're you're like the only person that I've told that to who got who got it. I fucking love it, dude. Like when I'm like, yeah. So you're just basically using the the manual for how the universe works final edition, and they're just like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, it's the final. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they discovered. I know we're. we're we're running over. Oh, time. we're going over. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't matter. They discovered this uh, <laughs> this nuclear reactor. Ty Ty told me about this. They discovered this nuclear reactor that's like 1.4 billion years old or something. Yeah, they're like, oh, it's totally natural. I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> it's totally natural. It's fossilized now. Uh, I was unaware that nuclear reactors could naturally occur. <laughs> yeah, and so were they. Yeah, it's like they just figured this out. Like, even if it's true that it was natural. I was like, that's extremely unlikely. <laughs> right. <laughs> right before they figured that out, manual for the universe, final edition, said, this is totally impossible. Right. Like, if somebody, somebody was like, hey, I think nuclear reactors could happen. Like, why, are we, why do we keep building them? They can happen naturally, bro. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Then they find it. Yeah. So then the next day, it's in the universe, final edition manual. That's right. And everyone treats it like it's always been there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, are you stupid? Of course they can happen naturally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've I've tried so many different ways of pointing this out. Like like one way that was sort of effective was to say like in 10 years, 10% of the stuff that we think is totally true because of science right now will be considered will have been falsified. Yeah. In 100 years, 90%. Just based on history of science. If you go back 100 years, 90% of what they thought was true because of science is now no longer thought to be true. Yeah, but Russ, 100 years ago, we didn't know near as much about the universe that we know now. That's right. Because of science. That's what they said 100 years ago, too. <laughs> <laughs> Our rate of learning the truth is getting better. It's, go, it's, it's getting <laughs> faster. You can't say that. <laughs> you have to know, I just said it. I know. You have to know the truth before you can say that you've learned the truth. <laughs> and the, we have one way of arriving at it, and that is science. And science is constantly correcting itself and getting that wrong too. You know, to me, it's like the, the science. What science should show us is that we don't know fucking anything. Right. <laughs> Instead, people are like, "We're badass because we have science." I I'm just like, said right to that statement. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! I'm not doing real science. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> you have to. You have to doubt. <laughs> Yeah, so all this stuff about the the long heads and these skeletons missing and government control over our past and all of that shit. When I first started thinking about that stuff, I was like, that's the way it is. <laughs> Bam. But I don't know. What man. do you mean that's the way it is? Like. I've been going what, the through the story this, we just went through. Yeah, I've been go, I've been going through my own manual for the way the universe works final edition. Oh yeah. And special edition. 
<laughs> special edition. <laughs> special final edition. But yeah, I had to learn that that uh, to always even question like the things that, that seem most likely. It's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Like that seems really likely right now, but Right. Shit. It always it will inevitably turn out to be next either. year I'll be like, Yeah, shit, all yeah. this new stuff that I've learned and I'm not like, saying it wasn't aliens, but it wasn't aliens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm always I'm 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 always doing that now like right. I I find out new information and I'm like, yeah, that that really lines up with this way that I thought everything happened. Yeah. And that everything worked, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't know. Right. Well, or I don't really know. It lines up, but it opens up new complexities. That don't hit yeah. you until way later. You're like doing some other stuff. And you're like, wait, <sighs> whoa. Yeah, uh, and that's the other thing too is that that there's in every story that you read or every new discovery, there's information that fits with the model that you want to yeah. be true because it's interesting or it's badass seeming yeah, at the time. That's the confirmation bias. Yeah, yeah, and you want to you want to be like, oh shit, that supports my theory or my idea, but. But the at the same brush, time, yeah. <laughs> there's like other stuff in there that's like, nah, eh, they probably got that wrong, or <laughs> yeah. this could be. You want to like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like that toothbrush isn't blue. This <laughs> <laughs> natural <laughs> inclination to just eh, those things. You, it's easy to question the things that don't support what you want to believe. Right. I yeah. Really easy to question those. Yeah. It's hard to question because the those ones. are the ones you're like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> but the stuff that fits right in, you just accept it unquestionably. Well, at least that's what a lot of people do. I try not to, I try not to do that. Yeah, me too. But I, and, I, and I the, catch myself doing it yeah. at the same time. It's For like, me, well, I read this story and I picked up all the, all of these details that support currently what I think would be really kick ass if this was the way it was. And that's, yeah. that's like, those are the ones I focus on. And the other ones I'm like, well, there was this one thing that deviated and it kind of messed it. But, but they don't really know that because they don't really know. And I have to remind myself, well, they don't really know the stuff that I want to accept either. Yeah. Like, this is a speculation. Yeah. So yeah, and you can only work with the information you're given, too. Like, yeah, exactly. It's it's already, by the time it reaches us, since we're not actually the fucking archaeologists digging it up. Yeah. By the time it reaches us, it's gone through their biases, and then through their assistance biases. Yeah, and, then and through, probably a reporter, yeah, if you're not reading the actual yeah. paper. And then through whatever, whatever reporters biases you know whatever and you know and so it's just and then there's a bias in the reporting period like these days we all have a biased news feed that fe that feeds us information that we think we're interested in and doesn't feed yeah. us information that we're not interested in because it doesn't fit our story yeah that's another thing i've learned too is that reading news stories about science yeah about science stuff yeah like not I the best idea i would read news stories about it before and be like oh okay you know get this idea and if I got really interested in something, then I would go actually, like the the person that they said discovered it or wrote look the paper him up or, or whatever, paper, and then yeah. like get the actual and then hit paper. a paywall, <laughs> <laughs> steal the actual paper, <laughs> okay, and listen to that through the voice, and just like holy shit, totally different, yeah, totally different. And I and I started to think like I wonder how many. Scientists, like when I read a news story about some scientific thing, like if the scientists actually read the news story like over breakfast and they're just like, ah, like getting all pissed, you know? Well, that's why they're supposed to be science writers, right? So they're supposed to be reporters who specifically do that. Yeah, but on the gravity, gravitational waves thing, like, oh my God. Oh, yeah, no. Well, the, yeah. I'm just not going to get the gravitate. They detected gravitational waves from quote unquote two black holes colliding together. <laughs> I read the news story on that, and then I went. We've never read, even proven black holes exist. I went and read the scientific <laughs> papers. It was just so screwed up the way they reported that story. Mm. That's really what what gave me the idea. Like, man, you got to be careful. Like, what? Because the the reporter doesn't matter how it, it, they could be totally honest, badass reporter, and they're doing the same thing that we do every time you get a load of information that you're really interested in. The things that you've paid attention to and the, the things that you've really focused on or ideas that you might have about something really stand out in yeah. whatever information you're getting, and that's what you kind of put together. It's uh, 
So you're yeah. So you so the reporter and maybe slanting the story, not intentional, but yeah. All right. Okay, yeah. And it could just be a lack of a lack of ability to understand. Like, what was the thing about that's true about quantum mechanics? It's like if you think you understand quantum mechanics, you don't understand quantum mechanics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> By the way, and I know we're way over, but I've been wanting to mention this. I think we need to do a show on this. Uh, so, like, I'll suggest it now, and then maybe we can go look at it for the show next week. Unified field theory, Einstein's concept of unified yeah. field theory like you you've looked into that a little yeah, bit yeah yeah absolutely okay that, that was l- like right at the beginning of the whole elastic universe idea. okay well i've i've been aware of the concept of unified field theory for a long time but i had forgotten what einstein's specific concept of it was because I, because it's it's now used as a, as a way of saying like this would be a theory of everything. Yeah. But Einstein thought unified field theory specifically would okay, cuz something happened with <clears throat> we have all these different forces and That's fields. Right. right? And then to when we when they were able to merge electricity and magnetism, right. they got this unified field theory of electromagnetism. Right. Einstein's idea of the unified field theory, which would complete the standard model of the universe cosmology, would have gravity in it. That's right. Which implies that there would be magnetogravitics and electrogravitics, just like we have electromagnetic. You could mix magnetic and gravity and electricity and gravity, so you'd have electrogravitic and magnetogravitic in a unified field. Okay. So what I what that I seems to make that seems to make a lot of sense with a lot of Tesla stuff that he was looking at electro and magnetogravitic shit. Like he huh. talked about those airships and how they would just fucking float powered by electricity. Uh, he wasn't talking about having propellers all over the place. He was saying that they would float because he would he was he was you know, he was talking about Einstein's shit, like a, some kind of electro or magnetogravitic engine. And they would work like UFOs. Like they would just fucking hover there like bricks don't. Like like the guy <laughs> from <laughs> This is a quote from from uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> this fucking massive yellow spaceship appears above him and hovers there like bricks don't. <laughs> well hell yeah, let's talk about that next time. Yeah, for unified sure. field, man. I want to talk about that with some Tesla shit. Yeah. Snake science. Yeah. And uh, probably the Vimanas, too, like that that Mercury implosion or Im, Im, impellered whatever engine or whatever would cause that shit to happen. And I've yeah. seen a video somewhere of somebody at NASA doing something with that, and the thing was floating up off the ground. I've got to find that okay. video. I remember watching it, and, like, there's all these dudes standing around, this thing's going, going, ooh, it's, like, floating up <laughs> and down or whatever, and it was it had something that was spinning that had, it was a sphere of Mercury. So. Hell, yeah. Yeah. So, uh... That's it for, that's it for, what is this, 20? Yeah. Right. 20. 20 mind-expanding, long-head-creating episodes. Yeah. <laughs> In the can. <laughs> In episode 21, you're not going to be allowed to use that Tesla lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Why, have I been clicking it? <laughs> yeah, you've been clicking it. <laughs> yeah, I'm proud of this thing. <laughs> Snake birds. Yeah, I got to keep that thing down. So... <clears throat> Uh, you can uh, contact us by going to the blog at uh, brothersoftheserpent.blogspot.com. You can email us at brothersoftheserpent at gmail.com. Uh, you can go on iTunes and give us five-star reviews and badass comments. Oh, yeah. Uh, that would really help us out. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can, you, if you guys know anybody that you think might be interested, tell them about it. Be like, hey, don't, snakes. don't blame me if you hate this, but snakes. <laughs> 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 um, and I uh, just want to thank Laura for the intros, uh, Kyle and Ty for all the badass music, uh, Aetherim Studios, AWAX Productions. And that's it for this week, guys. Thanks to all you guys listening. Good night, Adamu. Get back to work. Snakes! <laughs>